at a dominating defense. Northern Illinois and Miami coming up next. Illinois plays Miami of Ohio in DeKalb, Illinois. The Miami Red Hawks, the Northern Illinois Huskies here on Comcast Sportsnet. Good afternoon, everybody. Alongside Bob Kamel, I'm David Kaplan. Bob, an interesting matchup between these two teams. You've got Miami coming in to face a team on their home field who has one of the best defenses in the country. I don't think there's any question that defense headed up by Larry English. Every defense has a heart. Larry English is the heart of the Northern Illinois defense. All right, let's take a look at Larry English. This is a big-time player, and if he plays well two and a half sacks a week ago against Tennessee, Northern's very tough to stop. Talking to the Northern Illinois coaches, Larry plays on Saturday the way he plays on Tuesday and Wednesday. He's a great player, he's a relentless player, and he's a guy that's mo whose motor is constantly going. I mean, he is something very special across the entire scheme of college football. Last week, as they go down to Tennessee, on paper, people felt, wow, Tennessee, one of the premier programs in the country. This is a game Northern Illinois feels they should have won, losing 13-9. Absolutely. What's happened to the Northern Illinois team? They are starting to assume the personality of Coach Jerry Kill. Not to say Joe Novak is, still doesn't have a huge mark on this team. He does, but this has now become Jerry Kill's team. All right, and Miko Brown. Their little tailback out of Mississippi, this guy can flat out fly. Well, to go down to Moss Point, Mississippi, and be able to get a guy with this, these talents, 225 rushing yards, he can flat out play. He's a difference maker, David. All right, now for the Miami Redhawks, they've got a bit of a quarterback controversy. They're going to go with Dan Rodabaugh, but they've got a couple of guys back there that can make the team go. Well, they have like abilities, both quarterbacks, okay? It's going to be a matter of who has the hot hand. That's who's going to play in this game. All right, Daniel Radovaugh is the guy that they're going to hand the football to and ask him to walk in here and see if he can run the attack. Well, he has to get his team into the right play. He's the more experienced. He's been around. He, he does a better job of analysis of the defense, but at the same time, he is still going to have to come up big early in the game to remain in the game. All right, Northern Illinois has only played one home game so far. They're excited to be in front of their home crowd in DeKalb. We've got the opening kick starting lineup coming up next. Advance your career with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. I was able to balance my MBA with my professional life as well as my personal life. And best of all, NIU's MBA program is AACSB accredited and affordable. I was impressed with the knowledge and experience of the professors, and the program provided me with a well-rounded business education. The affordability and convenient locations made my decision easy, and it made my MBA a reality. Designed for the working professional, the MBA program at Northern Illinois University. Jumpstart your career today. Get reacquainted with an old friend, Eduardo's Mexican Restaurant in downtown DeKalb. Our simple but elegant dining room has been completely remodeled, including commissioned artwork by renowned Chicago artist Oscar Romero. But our great food hasn't changed. We still have the best selection of authentic Mexican dishes, including seasonal specials, all expertly prepared using only the finest and freshest ingredients, and served steaming hot to your table. Eduardo's Mexican Restaurant, downtown DeKalb. It's a 40th anniversary celebration at Casey's General Stores. All month, sign up to win free gas for an entire year. You could be a big winner just like Elizabeth Reed from Geneseo, Illinois. Casey's, it's all good. Tuesday, the Bulls preseason continues on Comcast Sportsnet as the number one overall draft pick, Derek Rhodes and the Bulls, take on the Minnesota Timberwolves at the United Center. Bulls, Timberwolves in HD, Tuesday at 7.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans, best friends. Going for a skinny mocha. Not as skinny as a Bob Rorman payment. It's Bob Rorman, Bear Boats Bonanza at Arlington Nissan. An 08 Ultima S with 31 miles per gallon. Only $1.99 a month during the Nissan Fall Tent Event. Bob Rorman. Nobody beats Bob. Nobody. The Midwest's largest Nissan dealership is the all-new Bob Rorman Arlington Nissan at the corner of Route 53 and Dundee Road. This broadcast of Northern Illinois Husky football is brought to you by Fatty's Pub and Grill, the official tailgate home of NIU Athletics. Village Commons Bookstore for all your Husky clothing and souvenirs. Visit VCBS 
Applebee's.com. Applebee's, try Applebee's, car side to go. You call it in, we bring it out. Casey's General Stores, the official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Casey's, the convenience store, and a whole lot more. Blaine's Farm and Fleet, I found it at Farm and Fleet. Jewel, we take one-stop shopping to the next level. TCF Bank opens seven days. The University Plaza, it's where to live. The NIU MBA programs take the NIU MBA challenge. Kishwaukee Hospital, health, heart, home. And Resource Bank, where banking is a pleasure. Welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois University. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel with you. To the field we go, the third member of our crew, Jim Blaney. All right, thank you very much, David. We're here with Jerry Kill, the head coach of the Northern Illinois Huskies. First of all, what did you learn about your team in the game against Tennessee that you didn't know going in? Well, I think the big thing is, is our kids have been pretty consistent on playing hard all the time. And I think that at Tennessee, we took it up one more notch. And probably the big question today for us is coming off a physical game at Tennessee, can we come back and play with the same type of intensity? We've been able to do it all year. Hopefully we can do it today. Jerry, thank you for your time and good luck today. David, back upstairs to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Time now for our Resource Bank keys to the game. Resource Bank, where banking is a pleasure. Bob. Northern Illinois has to play consistently on defense, just the way they have all year. They have to disrupt Dan Radabaugh, get him into the wrong play, and Brady has to get his team into the right play. And the Miami keys for us. All right, we are ready to... Opening kickoff, the NIU MBA program. Opening kickoff, take the NIU MBA challenge. The NIU MBA program, a proud sponsor of NIU Athletics. Miami has to get off to a quick start. They have to play well defensively, and they have to win the kicking game. Make sure that Northern Illinois plays on a long field. And it is Nathan Parsigian. Yes, he is related to the great era Parsigian. He will kick it off for Miami. Ricky Kreider and Miko Brown are deep for the Huskies. And it's going to be Miko Brown, and he's going to down it three yards deep in his end zone. Northern Illinois will go on the attack first, first and 10 from their 20. Very prudent move by Miko Brown. David, I always told the receivers, the, the gentleman uh, catching the uh, the kickoff, the bottom of the numbers, the bottom of the letters is three yards into the end zone. If you're beyond that, unless we want it in a high risk situation, take the knee right there. Prudent move. I think it's a good idea. Start clean on the 20 yard line, first and 10. All right, Demarcus Grady played a lot last week at Tennessee, but it's his first start. We'll see how number three handles the controls of the Northern Illinois Husky offense. Nico Brown, the tail of the tandem. We are ready to roll here in DeKalb. And it will be Miko Brown up first down. And Miko Brown got a lot of running room. Miko Brown up the sideline, ushered out at the 41-yard line. Brandon Stevens is the man that ushered him out, but a big first play for the Huskies. Time for our Applebee's starting lineup. Applebee's, try Applebee's car side to go. You call it in, we bring it out. There is the NIU offensive line, a good one. Olsen, Ani Buagu. Adamski, Keller, and John Brost, who is one of the top student athletes in America. There's their skill position players. Cunningham, Miko Brown, Scarb, the big physical fullback. Grady is the quarterback, and he's going to throw. Looking, going down the field, and it is caught! Inside the 25-yard line, Marcus Perez went up top with good, solid coverage. David. Made the catch, and Northern Illinois is in business. All right, here, play action. The reason you have good play action is because the first player, they have to respect the run with Miko Brown. Now, the ball's thrown down the sideline, high point. When I talk about high point, David, that becomes a jump ball. The defensive back is thinking, I've got as much right to that ball as the wide receiver, and the wide receiver said, hey, it's mine, because I'm going to get up just a little bit higher. Brandon Stevens was there in coverage, but a real nice catch by Marcus Perez. And this time it's going to be Grady, and he will be dragged out short of the 20. Defensive starters, again, brought to you by our friends at Applebee's. Craven, Redwine, Channels, and Coniglio. 
The physical D-line, the backers, Hudson, Bostic, and Mullins for the Red Hawks. Thompson, Stevens, Wilson, and Ben Bennett, the defensive secondary. David, on the very first play of the game, Miko Brown sh showed so much vision. Everything blocked to the inside. A couple stutter steps, bam, out to the outside and off to the races. Shane Montgomery, head coach of Miami. You've already heard from Jerry Kill, head coach of the Northern Illinois Huskies. Grady looks, throws, finds his man, and it's going to go for a loss of about a yard on the play. Landon Cox made the catch. Chris Shula came up and made the hit. He is the grandson of legendary coach Don Shula, son of former NFL coach well, David Shula. What we see here is great analysis and great recognition. Excellent defensive play. I talk about pursuit all the time, pursuit, pursuit, and that's getting 11 helmets around the football in every single play. Excellent play by that young man. Shula's dad, David, as I said, former head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. Third and eighth situation at the 21-yard line. Grady back, looking, has got time, throws, goes toward the end zone, and it is caught but out of bounds. Real nice try by Landon Cox, no relation to the Hall of Fame basketball coach. And Northern Illinois will settle for a field goal attempt. It will be somewhere around 38, 39 yards. Really a surprising call. I, I really thought that Jerry Kill would stick, stick with the running game just a little bit longer and get Miko Brown into, into a rhythm. That's what you want with a great back. Give him the ball, give him the ball. The more he gets the ball, the better he gets through the course of the game. Salerno out of a hole from Dit Benner. Kick is up, it is to the uprights, and it is good. Northern Illinois jumps on top. Northern Illinois, a 3 0 lead, 12 30 to go, first quarter in DeKalb. We'll be back at Comcast Sportsnet. Here's something to celebrate a new Applebee's neighborhood value. Endless favorites starting at $9.99. Choose from sweet and meaty riblets, panko crusted shrimp, or golden delicious chicken tenders. Your choice, all you can eat, starting at $9.99. Be ashamed not to have a cold beer with that. It's an all-you-can-eat dinner, but you gotta hurry. Endless riblets, shrimp, or chicken tenders, starting at $9.99. Only at Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons bookstore, you're entering Husky territory. VCB is the official site for NIU athletics. Featuring the new NIU logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or a fan of NIU athletics, the Village Commons Bookstore is your Husky headquarters. Visit us in DeKalb or call us toll free 800-700-4868 or on the web at www.bcbs.com. Northern Illinois, a 3-0 lead here on their first possession. Huskies over Red Hawks. There is Shane Montgomery, the head coach of the Miami Red Hawks. Shane Montgomery actually was coached by the Northern Illinois Athletic Director, Jeff Comfort, at NC State. NC State, he was an outstanding player at NC State. Now, you think of the people that occupied Shane Montgomery's chair before he has. You mentioned Parsegian, Woody Hayes, Bo Schembechler. I mean, my goodness, a lot of pressure sitting in that chair, but yet one of the great traditions in all of college football. Jamal Rogers will grab it just short of the goal line. Rogers is hit, breaks a tackle. Rogers stays on his feet, and Rogers is knocked down somewhere around the 27-yard line. Tracy Wilson, number 25, out of Harvey, Wilson, Illinois, came up and put a hit on him and knocked him down. Here is the University Plaza Northern Illinois Husky scoring drive. Six plays, 59 yards. It took just 230 off the clock. Salerno bangs through a 38-yard field goal. And we are ready to roll the University Plaza drive summary. It's where to live if you're in DeKalb. First and 10. And a little trickery right away. And it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. And the Husky defense will react. Maybe a gain of a couple yards. Let's take a look at our Applebee's starters for the Miami Red Hawks. It's Dave DeFranco, Bob Gully, Josh Satterthwaite, Brandon Brooks, and Steve Sutter. Crabtree, Merriweather the horse at tailback, Gibbons, Harris, and Dustin Woods. Dan Rodabaugh. 
Handoff, Husky defense swarms the play. Merriweather on the carry. A number of Huskies there to make the tackle. Take a look at our Applebee's Northern Illinois Husky starters. There's the D-line, it's a good one, led by the All-American English. The backers led by the heart of the defense, as Coach Kamel calls it, Tim McCarthy. And there's the starting secondary, Carter Pruitt, Bryant, and Tracy Wilson in for Sobel. Merriweather is the outstanding back, number 34 for Miami. Rodeball looking, throwing, finds his man. And we'll see where they spot this. They are going to spot it short of a first down. It'll bring up a third down situation. Crabtree, number 80, made the catch. You know, David, again, an interesting selection of play calling. Uh, the first play, a little bit of a chicanery right there with the, you know, the toss and the flip back going for the reverse and all that. I know you're trying to get good field position. You're trying to move the ball down the field. I prefer to stay in a rhythm, to get in a rhythm. Challenge that northern defense. See what you've got. See what they're giving. See what you can take from their defensive sets. Miami will punt it away, and a flag is going to come in, and I believe it's going to be on northern Illinois. This one's going to roll inside the five yard line. They'll mark it at the two, but a flag comes in. We'll see what the penalty is. It's going to be a hold on the Miami Redhawks. Northern Illinois came very close, Bobby, on fourth and one to blocking that. It's an interesting call. I'm trying to see who this hold is on. Good pressure by Northern Illinois. And sometimes when that happens, a guy starts to run by you. You don't want to be the guy that caused that you know, to be that swinging gate that causes that, that punt to be blocked. So you reach your hand out and grab the guy. Now, on fourth, and it was less than a yard, how much temptation is there for Shane Montgomery to say, we've gotten off to a tough start this year, we're going for it? None. None. He has to punt the football in that situation. Number 80, Number 80. Third pass. quarter, we'll being pressed a little bit to score, maybe you go for it. Right? Not right now. You cannot afford Northern Illinois play on a short field. They will take the football into the end zone. I'd like to see Jerry Kill come out in the next series. Let, 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 let's, let's test Let's test this guy. Let's test this guy from uh, Boston. What, what a huge respond. penalty because the ball was down at the two, but if you don't have the hole, it may have been blocked. Second opportunity on the punt. They get this one away. A deep, deep kick. Wow! And that will go into the end zone. That was a bomb. An that absolute bomb bomb off the foot of Jake Richardson. That is as good as you will see anywhere. That was above the rim of the stadium. What a punt. Granted, he has a little bit of a wind behind him, but that, that, was, that was wonderful. Boy, that punt in the air had to go 65, 70 yards. I'm saying, David, that was a, that, and that's what you want. You want, that, you want him to make a difference. I mentioned the kicking game. Half, now Northern Illinois has 80 yards to go, okay? That's why that punter is so critically important. Field position in a game where you are the underdog, field position looms larger. The Marcus Grady at the controls. Britt Davis, the man in motion. Miko Brown takes the handoff. Miko Brown will gain close to two yards, just short of two yards. Bring up a second and nine. David, one of the things we all have to understand is this. Any defense, any defense can take away an offensive threat by alignment and by scheme. But what do you give up when you take away Miko Brown? Right, if you adjust what you do, exactly. then you're giving something else a weaker spot. Exactly and then you have to compensate. They'll mark it at the 21. Justin Anderson now in at tailback. And Justin Anderson under center, and he's going to run with the football. We're seeing more of that. We saw that in the National Football League in the last couple of weeks with Ronnie Brown and the Miami Dolphins. Take a look, the direct snap again. Football's copycat. Football's copycat. He's not back there to throw the football. He's going to run a draw. I like, he tucks the football away. He becomes a fullback. Two hands over the ball. Get good lean, good body control. Here, we're going to see it again. Watch him right now as the ball gets into the fray. He covers the ball with the other hand. Leans forward, keeps his feet going, gives himself a chance. Great call by Jerry Kill. I like this adjustment. What a great block by Jason Onibuagu. 65, got a great seal in the hole that set that up. Grady looking, throwing, 
finds his man. It's Marcus Perez, who is ushered out of bounds again. Cornelius Ward in on coverage along with Stevens. Well, play calling by Jerry Kill right now has the Miami Red Hawks. They're just back on their heels. They're starting to guess a little bit here. This is when you have to start taking chances. Albeit, again, you are the underdog. You have to start taking some chances here. Let this football team, Northern Illinois football offense, get into a rhythm, and it's going to be a long afternoon for the Red Hawks. Miko Brown. Back in as the single back in the offense. Adamski, the center. Shotgun snap, they hand it to Miko Brown through the hole. Miko Brown breaks tackle. Miko Brown knocked out of bounds at the 35. Robbie Wilson gave him the escort to the sidelines, but Northern Illinois with a great run by Miko Brown. Great cut here by Miko Brown. But watch John Prost, number 60. Right there, uh, you talk about usher your man out of the play, and then that little burst through the lateral crease in the defense, and he takes it. He's got that burst when he see. There it is. Look at the blocking. Look at that. Look at that. Now he jumps to the outside. This young guy is, has special, special ability. They'll mark it right at the 35-yard line. Justin Anderson is back in again at the direct snap. Anderson cutting, cutting, knocked down, gain of about maybe two, maybe. Justin Anderson, the ball carrier. All right, the last time Joey we Hudson made the, the last time we sat up here at the end of the game, I gave that I gave the Bob Camell Award to Kyle Scarp, the fullback, and he's working on getting it again right now. This young guy comes to play. He hits on the rise. He blocks through the defender. As this game progresses, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of Kyle Scarp with great ability to block. Young guy from Lake Zurich High School, right here, high school captain, moved to fullback from defense. He's got a defensive mentality on the offensive side of the ball. Grady takes it, keeps it, fakes, looking, looking, throws, misses his man. He was looking for Nathan Palmer, threw it a little low. That, that particular play right there, starting with the fake, was just about a catastrophe waiting to happen. Never set his feet, threw the ball down into the ground. That might have been by design. The defender was all over him. Going to bring up a third and eight at the 33. 7-13 left first quarter in DeKalb, Illinois. Justin Anderson is in again. This time he's in as the tail of the tandem with your guy Scarb up in front of him. Perez the man in motion. Grady steps back, fakes, looks, looks, goes down the field, and he's got his man. And they call him out of bounds. Marcus Perez. Thought he got a foot down. Let's take a look, Bob. I think he's out of bounds. He waited just a little bit too long to throw the ball. He led him just, just a bit. He is out of bounds. Good that's call. A great call. Good call by the officials. That's where you have. That's where the you have to know where you're on the field. On the field. You know, you hear that term in basketball all the time, David. Know where you're at on the court. It's the same thing in football. Know where you're at on the field and choke your motor down. Choke your motor down. What would you do here on a? I, I'm, I'm going to keep the football right now. I'm going to keep the football. It's not going to be because any you're type kicking of kicking into the wind. We saw what that wind does to a punt. So to go into the wind, you're looking at a 50-plus yard field goal. I, I think with the way no, Northern Illinois plays defense, you go for it here. You're going to throw the football. Time out, Northern Illinois. I would give my quarterback a run-pass option, get him out into the flat, pump a couple times, the coverage comes up, throw the ball behind him, the it coverage lays back, with his take speed. off with the football. Absolutely. But you want to give him a run-pass option. Jerry Kill checking that little little call sheet. David, let's see what's he got on there. Let's go down to Jim, Jim Blaney on the sidelines. David, one of the guys that's really had an outstanding game so far, and I know we don't give player of the game for less than five minutes of work, but Marcus Perez has been outstanding, not only with getting in the patterns and being thrown to, he just missed having a reception on that third down play, but he's also been very active in the blocking game as well. So as we, we hear it all the time, that if you're a receiver, you better be active as a blocker as well. And so far in this game, Marcus Perez has been bringing it every down. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Some quick stat for you. Miko Brown, three carries, 47 yards. Perez, two catches for 42. Grady, three of six for 42 yards through the air. 
you want to be a complete wide receiver, you have to block. If you want to impress those pro scouts that come to watch, you have to be able to block. Great point. Adamski, the anchor, the center, barking out signals. Man in motion. Grady looks, looks, pocket presence, throws, goes down the sidelines, knocked away. And a flag comes flying. A pass interference call is going to be called on the Miami Red Hawks. Shane Montgomery is barking that it is an uncatchable pass. He's saying, can't catch it, it's way over his head. I can understand the frustration. Well, that's a big play. You get a stop, your defenders a spot. look to be automatic. You know, a First pass down. way, way over the top. Let's take a look at the end of the play again. Let's see if Shane Montgomery has any reason to be angry. I think it's a good call. David, I think it's a good call. I mean, they had him bracketed inside as well as outside. I didn't think it was a penalty, to be honest with you. You're the coach. I'll go with you. But I, I, I will tell you, they had him coverage. bracketed, okay? I don't think he was in play, to be honest. I think he was out of bounds. If he was out of bounds, then it really shouldn't be a call, but I didn't see that. Miko Brown cuts it back inside. He's knocked down inside the 15-yard line. Can we get one more look at that? It really looked like the wide receiver, Marcus Perez, was out of bounds when that pass was came he over the top. Was he pressed out of bounds, though, however? Here we go. Well, here's again. the pass again. Second now you take a look. He's out of bounds right there. When that pass gets there, Bob, his foot is out of bounds. Miko Brown makes one man miss. Drag down at the 11. It'll be a third down situation. I don't think there was indisputable evidence, David. Oh my goodness. I'd have to see about four or five angles of that, as good as our guys are. As good as our camera guys are, they are, and they like are good. like an ex-coach. Well, when I coach defense, when I coach linebackers, I'd say he's out of bounds. But, you know, later, later on, I coach tight ends. Yeah. And running, he's in running, bounds. He's in bounds. I like this Northern Illinois offensive line. They are a well-coached bunch. Miko Brown, and he is dragged down on a real, real Ball good surge. Brown. Martin Channel, six feet tall, but 314 pounds. This big hoss came flying up and made a play. He wow. made the running back readjust by penetration. He got he got into the center, and he was pad under pad on the center. Low man wins. He had he, great leverage by Martin Channels. He's six feet tall. He's not a long-legged guy. He's, he's what we call kind of a low-cut guy at 314 pounds, and he has to be awfully strong. Great track guy with the discus and the shot, but also. All right, Salerno, this will be a 30-yard attempt. Snap, set. Kick up, and it is no good. He missed it from 30 yards, pulled it left. Wide left and so Miami line. withstands the Northern Illinois offensive attack, and they will take over first and 10. We've got a timeout on the field. 4.58 left in the first. Huskies three, Red Hawks nothing. Imagine. A place where you'll find a hammer for every nail, a blade for every saw, a bit for every drill, and a drill for every bit. Well, you can stop imagining because that place is real, people, and it's called Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Contractors and do-it-yourselfers know they can count on Blaine's for the best name brand tools and hardware at honest low prices. The Home Improvement Center at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Just imagine. Join the post-game party on Comcast Sportsnet as I break down every Bears game with former Bears Dan Jiggins, Jerry Azuma, and Jim Miller. We'll bring you the Bears press conferences after every game. And William Jackson is live outside the Bears locker room with player reaction. Plus, Jerry Azuma gives out his coveted Jerry's GQ Award to the best-dressed bear. Trust me, you don't want to miss U.S. Cellular Bears post-game live after every game. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. Thanks, best friend. 
every Thursday. No other show goes more in-depth on your Chicago Bears than Countdown to Kickoff. Join Pro Bowl cornerback Nathan Vasher and 85 Bear Tom Thayer as they break down every angle before the weekend's big matchup. Keys to the game, matchups to look for, and analysis from two Bears who know football. Plus, this all-star duo answers questions directly from you, the Chicago Bears fan. Don't miss Countdown to Kickoff with Nathan Vasher and Tom Thayer every Thursday at 11, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. Welcome back, everybody, in the spirit here. The Northern Illinois Huskies lead the Miami University Red Hawks. Everybody having a good time on an absolutely spectacular day here at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, and the man on the sidelines is Jim Blaney. We are back to action. Take a look at the total offense so far for Miami, but they're going to try and get a big bundle here incomplete overthrew the intended receiver Dustin Woods from Cincinnati Ohio real good speedster for Miami and just couldn't quite run it down David this is basically like the first Miami call of the game with the uh, with the reverse I really I, I it's difficult a bit difficult for me to understand why you wouldn't try to get into some type of rhythm try to challenge that northern rather than look for the big play exactly than rather look for the big play because they know you uh, a little bit of this a little bit of that you know try to find something that you can hang your hat on for the entire game, something that's that that you know something that you can do that's going to be successful. The other thing happens in a situation like that is you really never get to see number 83 offense. You never really get to see what the defense is trying to give you. Not until you start to a few running plays, maybe a play action. Now you start to make your offensive adjustments. Well, if you take the football and just throw it down the field right away, you learn nothing about that defense at that point in time. I'm not trying to be overcritical of Miami. I just find it that, you know, th those kind of calls are, you know, a bit unusual this early in the game. Draw play will be knocked down at the 16-yard line. Zach Larson came up and made the hit on Thomas Merriweather. This is probably their most impressive play so far. They haven't had a lot of opportunities, but there's the draw, and he's going to at least make something happen. Picks up a little bit of positive yardage. It'll be a third and 13. Well, that's what throwing the football downfield and trying to get that quick score does. If you get the seven, I mean, obviously you're six. It's great. But if you don't, now you're in second and 10. Second and 10 is a tough call. And another flag flies against Miami. On the road, on the road, you have to guard against these things. You have to coach against these things. You have to come out and play clean when you're on the road as an underdog to give yourself an opportunity. Because now, I mean, even with the third, I don't have a third down play for this right here. You're going to try to move the ball downfield a little bit and then get your punter into the game and then play field position football again. This is where Larry English makes a living. They dump it off on a screen. They're going to pick up some positive yardage. It'll be short of a first down. Pass is completed to Andre Bratton. But nearly picked it up. Well, Andre Bratton made the catch. Johnny Tranchatella, number 42, roared over from his linebacker spot to make the hit. Larry English is tough to deal with in any situation. But you give him in third and forever, and he's got that leg back, that tackle virtually has no chance. Nico Brown, the deep man. We'll see what kind of punt they get off again. This one will be a driving kick, not quite as deep as the last one. There'll be a flag on Miami. Nico Brown stays on his feet, cuts it back. Nico Brown knocked down at the 35, but I believe he was interfered with on the catch. We'll see what the flag is, but it looked to me as though there may have been a little bit of contact. Definitely a flag. Definitely contact prior to catching the football. I have to give him the opportunity to catch the ball. Yes, that will be. Of the last four plays, three have been penalties on Miami. Right here. Right here. Break down. Break down. Quit. You can't keep coming. As you have to start to choke your motor down just a bit until he makes contact with the football, and then you unload. Penalty on number 24, Brandon Kick Stevens. Interference, number 24 of the kicking team. That penalty is declined. The ball will be put in play at the 35-yard line. First down. 
All right, Northern Illinois, a 3 0 lead. They've got the football back when we come back. A Comcast Sports Network. College life is great, but aren't you sick of living in cramped spaces, lack of privacy, ramen noodles? At University Plaza, we can help. It's like a Chicago high rise with a friendly family feel. From enjoying the pleasures of private bathrooms and a restaurant style food court, to keeping fit in a fully equipped fitness center, to lounging in the pool or hot tub. Experience so much more for less than what you might think. If you've never been here, you owe it to yourself to check us out. University Plaza, big city atmosphere in the heart of NIU. Have work to do? You need a truck. Step up to the best. It's GMC Truck Month. Get professional grade engineering, power, payload, and fuel efficiency. Like the Sierra 1500 with better available V8 fuel economy than Toyota Tundra. It's time to go to work. It's GMC Truck Month. Now get 0% APR financing or 5,000 purchase bonus cash on the 2008 GMC Sierra. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer. This is a great rivalry. These two schools have locked horns a lot of times. Here's Michael the Burner Turner back in 2002. Watch him take it to the corner of the end zone and touchdown Northern Illinois. Here's another big run. Michael the Burner Turner against the Miami Redhawks. Taking it down the field. Michael Turner will deal with the Bears tomorrow now playing for the Atlanta Falcons. And this is Ben Roethlisberger eating some turf as Northern Illinois won a shootout back in 02. There's Joe Novak, one of the really good coaches that ever worked at this school. Ironically, Joe Novak, a Miami of Ohio graduate. Chad Spann now in at running back for Northern Illinois. Tough snap picked up by Grady. He will be dragged down short of the 40 yard line. Did a nice job to catch a very low snap. You know, David, at the open of the, open of the show, I talked a little bit about Joe Novak, that he still has, you know, he still has a, a fingerprint here. And that'll start to dissipate as Jerry Kill gets into his own tenure as the head football coach here. And that's why you start to see this personality, this team start to assume the Jerry Kill personality. And that, you know, is no nothing indicative of anything but the great things that Joe Novak did. And I know Jerry Kill has a great deal of respect for Joe. Brady looks, throws, and it's dropped. Simon dropped it. David, believe it or not, that is one of the most difficult throws for a quarterback to make. And I'll tell you why. It's the angle of the throw from the quarterback's set position. But where he put it, it should have been caught. It should have been caught. There's no question, but it is a difficult throw. David, basically what that is, it's an elongated pitch. It's just like just taking the old days, tossing it to the tailback, the Lombardi sweep and all that. It's basically the same principle, except now you're throwing the football overhand to a, a, a player that's on the wider on the flank. Third and six at the 39. Man in motion. Grady looking, looking, has some time, finds his man. Finds the big fullback, Kyle Starb, your guy. Comes out of the backfield, makes the catch, rumbles for an NIU first down. Here's the whole deal with this. Here's the whole deal with this is being patient. It's being patient, waiting until he finds that soft spot and, and beats, beats the, the coverage, the zone coverage. Here it is right there. Throw that ball too soon and 48's all over him. Throw it just as he threw it and now we got a chance to get up the sideline with yards after catch. Hand off to Span, Chad Span. Span number 28 is a sophomore out of Indianapolis, 5'9, 195. So you see the depth that they have at tailback. Well, and, and that goes back to recruiting. They've recruited so well here. And I like the demographic that they recruit from. They're basically a Midwest operation, but when they do get an opportunity to go out to Moss Point, Mississippi, or get a young, maybe there's a connection here. Maybe some family in the Chicago area, the Rockford area, someplace in the Midwest. Nice job of recruiting and of recruiting quality young people. Grady fakes, keeps it, breaks a tackle, knocked down just short of the 45. 
I think that's a case right there of going to the well just a little bit too often. You start the play action to the left, and so it's a basically it's a counter play out of the Double older play. type of football. The quarterback, however, is in the shotgun. So he gets the, everybody going one direction, counts on the linebackers to fly out in that direction and come back the other way. Miami's linebackers right now are playing very disciplined. They're not Staying going with all that play, play action. Staying at home. Remember, a linebacker should stay on the back hip of the football, not in front of the football. Now that gives him a chance to cut the football between the two of them. And defense is knowing where your help is at. I know where the other linebacker is. I know we've got a chance to make this play. Third and five. Toss. It is caught. Knocked down short. Short of the first down. A real nice throw. Nathan Palmer got lit up. He got popped. Watch the throw by Grady. There's the toss. Puts a little air on it. It's caught by Palmer. Tries to make a cut. And he gets drilled. Did hang on. Real nice hit by Chris Shula. And we have played one quarter of football. Here at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois, the Northern Illinois Huskies will make a decision. Fourth and one at the Miami 42 when we come back. But right now, it's the Huskies three. The Red Hawks nothing is Miko Brown having a big day. Don't miss a thing life has to offer. The Hauser Ross Eye Institute offers a number of options to help you see better. LASIK is just one of a number of choices from Hauser Ross. New lens technology can help you see near, far, and everything in between. Beyond contacts, beyond LASIK, new lens technology offers an exciting choice in vision correction. Leave it to the experienced doctors of Hauser Ross to have the best choices for your vision. See all that life has to offer at the Hauser Ross Eye Institute in Sycamore. Husky fans, Fatty's Pub and Grill in DeKalb is your official pre- and post-game NIU football headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our big screens or having some of our famous grilled food out in our beer garden, Fatty's is the place to be. Reserve your date for your holiday party at Fatty's. And if you're looking for catering for your next event, Fatty's also offers full-service on- and off-site catering. For more information, go to fattyspub.com or call 815-758-7737. Comcast and BreastCancer.org present the Pink Ribbon Campaign. Congratulations, you just made history. Encouraging stories. Your initial reaction is, am I going to beat this? New information. Picking the right foods can make a huge difference. Inspiring entertainment. I have breast cancer. What? From Lifetime Discovery Health Bio, HBO Showtime, and more. Just select Life and Home from the on-demand menu, then Pink Ribbon. The Pink Ribbon Campaign, finding the strength you need. All right, welcome back. We are ready for the second quarter. Northern Illinois, is this what you would do, Bobby? Punt it away? No, I'd go for it right here. I'm really serious. I, you're just too good on defense, I believe. Andy Ditbenner, outstanding punter, 6'2 senior. Jeff Thompson, the deep man. And he will try and pooch kick this and pin Miami deep. And I think they're going to have some success right at the one yard line. It gets no better than that. A directional Greg kick is Turner. A directional kick. I don't understand why more people at every level of football don't resort to this type of a directional kick. I can't believe it's that hard. It's all he has to do at practice all day. Great, great coverage. I'm, hey, I'm I was serious. a former kicker. I resent oh. that. We worked hard. Getting a drink, walking around the field, waiting to be called on. I mean, here we go. Rushing yards is what really jumps out to me here. 78 to a minus one. And you know what that interprets? That means the other team doesn't have the football. If they don't have How the about football, time they can't score. You know, and, and, and time of possessions and penalties for 35 yards. Unlike, unlike a Miami team. David, I still like running the football. Why you love Woody Hayes and Bo Shemba? Well, it's less and less in Bo, but football's cyclical. It'll come back. People will start to defend. They'll start to stop these spread offenses, and people will start to look back and see what we did in the past that was successful. Two tight ends, a flanker, and a, and a tailback, and a fullback. Let's play some football here. But I do have to respect these great offenses that Jerry Kill and uh, people of his ilk have, have, have come up with over the years. Bit of a delay here. And remember one thing, this spread offense didn't start 
in the Big Ten. It didn't start in the Southeast Conference. The spread off and started in the Mid-American Conference. There you go. The late Randy Walker ran a great spread offense. He used to coach right here at Miami before going to Northwestern. Toss into the end zone, and it will be brought out for a gain of maybe seven yards. Dustin Woods made the catch, rumbled up the left sideline, and it'll be a second down, and we'll call it two, maybe three. They'll give him eight, so second and two. Give him eight and give him a little bit of breathing room. Give him a chance, you know, the, the, you know it, it gives you more of an opportunity to dig just a little deeper into that playbook. Now, do you take a shot downfield on second no. and two or no? no? No, no, waist down, no, not in this situation, not yet. Hand off Merriweather, driving, he's short of it. Merriweather stopped on a second and two. Tim McCarthy, the linebacker, the middle linebacker, came up and led the charge. Look at that defensive dominance. Giving up one touchdown and 5.3 average points their last three games. They lead the MAC in rushing, scoring, and total defense. Second pass efficiency defense, and they're among the top 20 defenses in America. A lot of great, a lot of great statistics there. The most important statistic: defense against the score. Pitch. It will be blown up and short of the first down. We'll see the spot, but I believe Tracy Wilson may have just blown up that play, and he drilled Merriweather. Now, what we, we, we go here, we go from inst instinctive football, op playing against option, now it becomes assignment football. Assignment football, somebody's got the tailback, somebody's got the quarterback. He, ex as you mentioned, David, he comes up and explodes this play. Why? Because he doesn't tackle to the ball carrier, he tackles through the ball carrier. And that also was not a great pitch. Merriweather had to reach back to get it and then turn it upfield, and he's still down. Well, what happens is you achieve what you emphasize. I like a couple option plays, regardless of what offense you run. But if you're not going to hang your hat on it and be a big part of it, you're going to have, a, you know, it'll be more of a trick play than it would be a, a smooth type of option play. This is what they call a speed option. In other words, he gets the football, he heads downhill. If the defensive end comes to him, he pitches it. If not, he keeps it. Let's take a look. He may have caught one right on the knee. Here comes the hit. Oh, boy. Yes, indeed. Yes, he yes, He caught indeed. it on the knee, but we hope he's fine. Boy, did he go down hard. That, that was a big-time hit. Let's hope he's, hope he's okay. You hate to see guys get hurt. Quality football player, but he is up. Tough kid, and he is... Walking off under his own power, Thomas Merriweather. Real fine football player. 100, 5'10", 199 pound senior, and this guy can carry the mail as well as anybody. Hazelwood East High School, talk about fine football tradition. Miko Brown, the deep man, standing at the 45. High driving kick into the wind, and he will catch it. At the 43, make a move, Miko Brown into Miami territory at the 43. The Huskies, great field position when we come back. We are early second quarter in DeKalb. Northern Illinois leads Miami by three. Fresh. At Jill Osco, it's not just about the food. It also describes the way we do things. From our deli, and butcher to our bakery then in every department we're dedicated to giving you our very best so whatever you're in the market for you can always find it here fresh to your family from Jewel Osco Hey Husky fan shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu we carry the best brands, Gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations, the Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. Welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois, the campus of Northern Illinois University. I'm David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, our analyst. It is a beautiful day here 
Hard to believe that we're headed towards winter, Bobby. This may be the nicest day we have for a long, long time. It may get a little cold in these parts. Uh, Jim Blaney is the man roaming the sideline. Quick look at some of the stats. Miami has not picked up a first down yet. Northern Illinois has six. Time of possession, 11-17 to 5-30 in NIU's favor. Plays 21 for 134 total yards for the Red Hawks. Nine plays for 27 total yards. David, if you watched the ebb and flow of this game and didn't look at the scoreboard, you would be basically shocked to know that the score of this game is three to nothing at the hat. Nico Brown the has it, cuts it back and fumbles. Football on the deck. I think Northern Illinois recovered it. They did. I think it rolled right. I think Willie Clark got it, but I think it went right by Cornelius Ward and through his hands. Watch Cornelius Ward. He has it. It's his ball. And I think he just, for whatever reason, couldn't gather it in. There's the hit ball out. Cornelius Ward, it rolls right through his hands. Miko Brown, Miko Brown, when the ball starts to come into the fray, cover the football. Cover the football. Right here, you're talking about, you know, People practice that. You practice sticking your arm out, scooping the football up, bring it into your midsection, and cover the ball. Bad snap, hits the deck. Grady picks it up, makes a cut. Grady into the open field. Grady up the sideline. Horse collared out of bounds at the 11. There's one play that you cannot practice against, and it is a broken play. And that's what we had right here, a broken play. He missed. He dropped the football. Miami gets back on its heels just a bit because of his athleticism, because now he becomes a running back, takes off with the football, and has a great, great play. Watch the block by Clark, number 10. Watch this block. Boom! Gets right into traffic and makes a play, Bob. That's coaching. You coach, you achieve what you emphasize at any level of football and any technique. And if your receivers are going to go downfield and block like that, they have to do it on Tuesday and Wednesday first. Grady breaks a tackle. Grady stays on his feet. Dragged down inside the 10. Let's go to Jim Blaney for an update on Thomas Merriweather. All right, Dave. When Merriweather came off the field, the Miami trainers were looking at his left hip, kind of flexing and he was moving it, and he's gradually gotten more and more motion. First, he started out just doing a little bit of cutting, then a little bit of, you know, jogging, and now some running up and down the sidelines. He's nodding his head saying, I can go back in if you need me. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Boy, he took a scary hit, but tough kid. Boy, that horse collar is a dangerous play. It's an interesting call here. Justin Anderson, the running back, the direct snap, takes it, looks, cuts it up inside, knocked down short of the five, inside the six, and flags fly everywhere. We got yellow everywhere. Northern Illinois seems to indicate the calls against Miami. See if it's a face mask. Yep, we're gonna get a personal foul face mask on the Miami Red Hawks, so another critical penalty. First down. Also a first Jerry down Kittle. inside the four yard line. Grady, five for nine for 56 yards and carried it for 40 yards. He's got 96 total yards already. Here he comes. There comes Justin Anderson and there's the grab of the face mask. That's where the flags fly. First and goal at the four for Northern Illinois. Triple stack set. With Justin Anderson, the tail of the tandem. They'll give it to Justin Anderson. He's tripped up at the three. Yet again, a great job by Joey Kyle Hudson, Scar one of the men blocking. in there. Also number 98, Mark Pawn, 6'3", and just about 280 out of Strongsville, Ohio, got in there to trip him up as well. This is the message that I like to send to my offensive line. You're coaching a football game. We're inside the four-yard line. Can you get us into the end zone? Can you get pad under pad? Can you bring your legs? Can we create a new line of scrimmage? This is good. This is what, I, myself, this is what develops great offensive line. Well, you watch Martin Channels in the middle in there. Be interesting to see. 314 pounder. He gets a lot of push. Grady looking, looking, throws back in the end zone. 
Divots it! Touchdown, Northern Illinois, Landon Cox. Well executed play that flooded the right side for Northern Illinois. Had a couple of options right there. Threw the ball off the corner. The corner bites on the deeper route. He throws the under route. The corner stays shallow. He throws it over the top. Great, great, great throw right there. Caught, caught the defender in a no-win situation. Where do I go underneath or do I go to the top? I'm throwing the football opposite. Good read. Salerno on to add the point after. Snap, set, kick, it is perfect. 10-0, Northern Illinois, Landon Cox. From DeMarcus Grady, and the Huskies have expanded their lead. He's wide open, he makes the play. It's a 40th anniversary celebration at Casey's General Stores. All month, sign up to win free gas for an entire year. You could be a big winner just like Elizabeth Reed from Geneseo, Illinois. Casey's, it's all good. Monday, the UC is back in action as Patrick Kane and the Blackhawks take on the National Predators in a Central Division collision. Coverage starts at Blackhawks pregame live. Blackhawks Predators in HD, Monday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friend. These are Bobby Jack glasses. <laughs> man, Billy Jack. Billy. Oh, my fault. <laughs> Magical. You can't tell. Hey, we'll have the latest on the Bulls and Blackhawks once we settle down a little bit. We were so frustrated that we all got sprayed by water. Hope you brought your umbrella. Ella, Ella, eh, eh. Sports night every night at 6 30, 10 and midnight. A lot of sports, a lot of fun. Heartland Poker Tour is Sunday at 9 on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back. We are ready to put the ball back in play. The Huskies a 10-0 lead. Salerno will kick it away. Jamal Rogers, the deep man. There is our University Plaza Drive summary. The Huskies ending it with Landy Cox's first career touchdown. Six plays, 42 yards, a three-yard toss. And that is, as I said, Cox's first career TD. You always remember those. Absolutely. Unless you've never had one. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> Welcome in. I actually scored a touchdown. You did? But I've never shot a three-pointer, and you have. I've done that. <laughs> okay. Never found pay dirt. But I'm in great con great shape because Dan Hampton, all of them, he never did either. But Miami right now, they ha they have to find some type of, a, of an identity, albeit within this game. They have to make some adjustments. Radabaugh finds his man over the top. Dustin catch Woods made the catch. Adjustments are Schiller not made the tackle. just for the halftime. Adjustments are made through the course of the game. This is where the coaches up in the booth begin to earn their money or do earn their money. Watch Rodabaugh take a hit here. Well, I, I give him a lot of credit. You feel that. You see that. You know that's coming. Great job of hanging in there. Larry English. Lest we be surprised. No shot. Miami stays on the ground. Oh, Handoff will gain first down yardage. They will move the chains. See, this Andre Bratton, who's in for Merriweather. So Merriweather still... Favoring that left knee, you can see him. He's on the sideline right now. I'm checking. This is what I would have liked to see out of Miami early on in the game. First Find that Miami identity. First down, by the way. First one. They throw. They look. And on first down, they pick up six yards. Jamal Rogers makes the catch. Alex Kuba made the tackle. Well, this is where communication becomes so important. This is where, if you've had a coordinator that has been around with you for a long time, you're a head coach, the assistant coaches, everybody starts to get on the same page. This is where the give and take starts with the communication from the press box down to the field. 
this is where you have to start, you know, the, as a head coach, you start out those guys upstairs, you know what? Let, let, let's get something going here. Let's, let's find some identity, as I mentioned before, albeit within, you know, the second quarter of the game. Radabaugh hit as he throws and tosses it out of bounds. His arm was hit by Larry English as he went to make the throw. English just gets such good pressure. Well, well, watch the start he gets here. He's in that sprinter. That first step tells it all. That tackle basically has no chance. If it's a play, when, as soon as he reads pass, he is coming. That leg is back. The most important part of a pass rush is that first step, David. That first step. Miami has nary a rushing yard. Third and four at the 38. Got time, throws, has his man. Move the sticks, first down Miami. You know, you, real nice throw, he hung in there very well. You have a playbook, obviously have a playbook. You have a philosophy. You start to dig just a little bit deeper, just a little bit deeper into that playbook. Good pitch, good throw. Why? It was thrown away from the corner. Real nice catch by Armand Robinson. Over his outside shoulder. Rodabaugh. Well, that's that's good coaching, wide receiver coaching. When you can cause, when you are able to cause separation from the corner and man-to-man -man coverage and come back for the football. Ball's right at the 50 on a first and 10. Hand off and a nice call on first down. Little misdirection. Jamal Rogers rumbles for another Miami first down. So they are not taking that. Touchdown, Northern Illinois just scored to heart. They are coming right back at him. Oh, and that, and, you know, that's what you do. You get your team into the right play. Rodabaugh has many, many uh, choices when the play is called. Now he starts to get a feel for what the Northern Illinois defense is doing. He starts to have some success. And, you know, how, uh, rhythm, it, it, the rhythm that you get in is, is it's just so important. Rodabaugh fakes, looks, goes down the field. Got a man out there and just... Missed him. Just missed Chris Givens. That's the second time he has aired it out and just yes, overthrew man. his man. He had his man. Well, th that's on right about. Now, you, what you have here is you have a too deep uh, defense. In other words, they're playing on the hash. They're too deep. What does he do? He splits them. He had his guy. If you see, any time when you see a too deep coverage, whether you run the tight end down the middle or you run the wide receiver down the middle, there is no help over the top. Where in a three deep coverage, you have that center fielder back there to roam just a little bit. That was an excellent call. Should have been, and the play should have been executed to a point of a touchdown. Hand off and up comes the Northern Illinois secondary to make the play. Bradley Pruitt made the hit. Andre Bratton on the carry. When I'm watching Larry English in my binoculars, man, does that guy have a motor? The way to sh slow down Larry English as well as all the rest of those fine defensive linemen is to run those draw plays. Make them check, make them check draw first before they get into the pass rush. You have to slow them down. Rodabaugh looking, looking, got a lot of time. Throws and it is incomplete. Incomplete. He had a shot at his man, Donovan Potter, but the pass was behind him. Donovan Potter has to be able to adjust even to a ball that's a bit of an errant throw that's thrown behind him. That is what the pro scouts look for. Now here's Rodabaugh. Now he's getting a lot of time, Bob. Boy, he is. They're, they're starting to radically improve their protection as this game goes on. Adjust, come back, the ball was in the air long enough. Make the turn, come back for the football. Miami will go for it, Rodabaugh looking, looking, has time, throws, and it will be, I believe, short of the first down. Let's see where they spot it. Yes, it will be. Jake O'Connell made the catch, David Bryant came up, made the hit, short of the first down. And Northern Illinois will take over with 6.38 to go in the second with a 10-0 lead. That's a point, again, of knowing where you're at on the field. Not only the, the wide receiver, but the quarterback. Knowing what it takes to move the sticks. 
nice series there, Miami. Uh, something to hang their hat on. Something that the coaches. They made progress. Yeah, something that the coaches up in the booth now. They get the offense on the sidelines. And look, the score right now is 10 to nothing. We're in this game. This is what we did well. This is where we're going to make these adjustments. The communication from the press box, as I mentioned before, is critically. Brady important. going down the field, and it is caught and out of bounds. Marcus Perez made the catch. That's the second time that they've gone down the sidelines, and the pass has been thrown out of bounds. Well, here's the deal with the wide receiver. that You have to run that pattern knowing that if the ball's thrown over your shoulder, that you've given the quarterback enough space to drop that ball in there. You have to know where you're at on the field. I always, like a three-yard rule, never on that route get closer than three yards to the sideline until the ball is thrown. Second down, Grady's gonna keep it, and he will go nowhere. Down to the sidelines we go with Jim Blaney. All right, David, thank you very much. After Northern Illinois scored their touchdown in their last possession, as the offense came off the field, particularly the offensive line, usually their position coaches are there waiting for them on the sidelines, but Jerry Kill talked to the offensive line and he told them, stay with your rules, don't try to do too much, meaning he's satisfied with the way they're playing and he wants them just to stick with the plan and not start overreaching. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. 558 and counting here. Second quarter in Decal. Grady looking, looking, tosses. Miko Brown. Knocked down short of a first down. Well, I have to tell you, Miko Brown, for, uh, is, and his experience in football is becoming a very complete back. What he does here is this. He stays away from the defenders, he squares his shoulders, he makes himself a big target, and gives himself a chance for yards after the catch. A lot of young backs don't get their head around quick enough, the quarterback is under duress, the and then you settle, you settle. Don't take yourself into the coverage. Eugene Harris the third is deep for Miami. A low driving kick and he catches it and he's got a chance for a big one. He's gone. He is up the sideline. He's to the 10, five, give him six. Touchdown Miami. There was a low driving kick and he made a heck of a play, Bob. That is that kick, that rugby kick, that, that, that directional kick. When it works, it's beautiful. When it doesn't, and it's a line drive, you have no coverage. You have no coverage whatsoever. Everybody's running downfield, thinking the ball's gonna end up somewhere inside the 10-yard line. They overrun the football, and he's off to the races. That was a wonderful play by this young man of feeling that ball clean, taking it, knowing that probably most of the defenders are almost behind him already. They're right back in the ball game. Well, let me ask you a question. Why go with the directional kick there? The extra point is good, and it's a 10-7 game. When you've got the wind with you, not just trying to... I wouldn't have deep. done it. I, I would have done it. 63 yards on the return. Miami right back in it. They trail by three. Be right back. Imagine a place where you'll find a hammer for every nail, a blade for every saw, a bit for every drill, and a drill for every bit. Well, you can stop imagining because that place is real, people, and it's called Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Contractors and do-it-yourselfers know they can count on Blaine's for the best name brand tools and hardware at honest low prices. The Home Improvement Center at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Just imagine. The first time I took five hour energy, I didn't feel bad afterwards. You know, usually you take energy drink and along the next three hours at some point, you just hit the wall and I never hit that wall. It just was a natural energy that stuck with me for a while, five hours or so. One of my friends on the team, a guy I'm with a lot, he uses it and he likes it. You know, he calls me to make sure I have two when I come in the morning, because he always needs one. I say, well, go buy your own, but I'm kind of like the five-hour designated driver. <laughs> five-hour energy, I use it, I love it. Ten seven, Huskies over Red Hawks. Four forty nine left, second quarter. Coming up at the half, we'll show you some great highlights, including that phenomenal punt return. 
stats, and we'll go one-on-one -on -one with Coach Dave Grant of the NIU Wrestling Program. He'll talk with our Jim Blaney. That is the Fatty's Pub and Grill halftime show. All right, Miami will put it back and play. Miko Brown and Ricky Kreider are deep. Nathan Parsigian puts it in play, and it may be headed out of bounds. It is. That, That's got to drive a coach crazy. I, there's no doubt about it. Let's take a look at the punt return again. Take us through, Bobby. Okay, who we have here? We call it a directional punt or the, you know, the rugby kick. What happened? See the coverage? Look at the coverage. They're all coming off field, off the field, anticipating that the ball is going to end up like it did the last time, somewhere inside the 10-yard line. This young guy feels the ball clean. He hits that lateral crease because it's not an organized coverage. There are no one is at their geographical points that they have on the field because they're almost basically beyond him. It's not what they're anticipating. I disagree with that call at that point in time. And you saw Jerry Kill talk to the special teams coach right after that happened. There comes a point in time, I'd say inside the 35 yard line maybe, I think there comes a point in time where you say, you know what, that's it. And we've got a brand new quarterback in for Northern Illinois, Chandler Harnish. He is in with Chad Spann, the running back. And he will gain very little, maybe picked up a yard, maybe a yard, yard and a half. What's your take on this, David? Joey Hudson made the hit. Kind of an unusual uh, uh, change at this point in time. Yeah, I'm checking out the Marcus Grady is over with the trainers right now. There's Looks the like he right is there. limping just a bit behind the Northern mm -hmm. Illinois bench. He is trying to run, but he is moving fairly gimpy back there. Another bad snap. Harnish picks it up, avoids tacklers, and tosses it out of bounds. That is the fourth bad snap that we've seen from Eddie Adamski today. Two well, low ones, another one that bounced in, and now here's one that almost goes over his head. Well, let's, let's, let's say this. This, this is, I don't put this on Adamski. I put this on the quarterback. He's got to be athletic enough. He took his eye off of off of the ball just in one second. You've got to be able to reach to your right. You run a drill, a bad snap drill. Everybody wants to blame the center, even if it's just a normal snap where he's on their center. Sometimes it's the quarterback's fault. Yeah, but yep. didn't it come in too high? No, you still have to make that catch. You're on scholarship. I mean, my goodness. Now, I'll tell you what happens here, though. These two quarterbacks do not have like abilities, okay? And when, by like abilities, I mean one is basically a thrower, one's basically a runner. Does, how does that affect your football team? It affects 10 other people, even to the point of the snap with the cadence. That might have been a cadence problem right there. Every inflection that a quarterback has is different from the other quarterback. How he calls the play, how he calls the cadence. And that's what happens when you change quarterbacks. You, you put yourself in that position. But I'm not gonna, I cannot blame Adamski for, uh, for all of these. There you is, have to make that, you have to feel that ball. There's a look at DeMarcus Grady who has played very well so far, but he is a bit gimpy on the Northern Illinois sideline. He's there with the training staff. As you can see he is limping fairly noticeably. We'll see what happens. I'm sure they will try and retape him at the half. Uh, but we will see. But right now Chandler Harnish is in. Northern Illinois at 10-7 lead. You're just joining us. They had a 10-0 lead. Miami took a punt back 60-plus yards to get their first score of the game. Harnish looking, looking, has time. Throws one to Scarb. We'll see where they spot this. Be very close. It will be enough for a Northern Illinois first down. Patience. Patience is what made this play. Scarf finds that soft spot, slows down. I know you like to hear me say this. He chokes his motor down just a bit. Good play action fake. There he is right there under the coverage. Now he, now he what? Now he's a fullback again. It's almost after he gets the ball, yards after catch. It's like a handoff. Now I, know, now I do what I normally do. Run with the football. He lowered his shoulder, became his own best blocker. Now, did you ever teach your linebackers to steal the play card off the quarterback's wrist? David, you know You absolutely do. We get it. No, I <laughs> Harness tries to break a tackle. Dragged down after a gain of two, two and a half yards. Okay, here's what I'm going to tell you, okay? First of all, the they've run this play time and time again. Can DeMarcus Grady run? Yes, he can. This young guy here does not have like abilities. He can't run, run that play that way. 
you become a more traditional offensive football team when this guy comes in the game, have him do the things that he can do. Too many times we see a quarterback forced into a system. I'm not saying that that's what happened here, but I am saying this. Their abilities are different, and it changes your offensive philosophy. Man in motion. Harnish. Play action fake. Looks. Throws. Bounces it in. Incomplete. It'll bring up a third and eight situation. We're inside three minutes. 2.55 to go. Second quarter. Well, here, don't we see the ball? But, but that ball... He needs to complete that pass. That ball bounces in there. But at the same time, that was basically the same play to Scarf that we've seen time and again. You go to that well too often, those corners and those safeties back there, they start to become instinctive against that play. Now, you give him the chance to pump that ball him there, to him there, then he chokes his motor. See, now he goes downfield and you throw the bomb. The deep pass. Harness out of the shotgun. Span the single back. Harness looks. Find Span, cuts it up, and he will be short of a first down. Northern Illinois will be forced to punt the football away, it looks like. We'll see if they go for it, but it's a fourth and two at the Miami 42-yard line. What do you do here? Well, what I say, that, uh, let me get to that call first. That is all about yards after catch, because you know that you are going to you are short of the sticks when you throw that football. Maybe you came down in your progression and that's all you had. But when you do make that throw, you anticipate yards after catch. I'm going to punt the football here. Do you directional yes. kick the low kick again? I knew you were going to ask me that. Exactly right. Yeah. That's my job. No, I, mean, I wouldn't, took I wouldn't it, do it. Took I'd, it back I'd, already? I'd kick it up to the uh, as high as I could and run underneath it. I, that's what you get, a high spiraling kick. Going to be caught by Harris. He's going to make a move. Harris up the sideline. Harris knocked out of bounds, and a flag goes flying. 30 yards in the air, lands at the 20. I think this would be a personal foul against Northern Illinois. Turner and Allen made the tackles on Eugene Harris the third. He's a sophomore. Out of Atlanta, Georgia, 5'10", 184 with great speed. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number nine of the return team penalized 10 yards I stand from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down, Miami. Now, by Northern Illinois, now you say, okay, there's a minute 53 left. I'm going to take a little bit of a chance here on, on first or second down. And then after that, I'm going to settle into something that's going to be, uh, I don't want to say a prevent, because the only thing a prevent defense does is prevent you from winning. But I might take a little chance on a blitz here. Miami, six penalties for 48 yards. Handoff and a real nice first down call. That Miami's offensive line starting to get Andre just a Bratton little bit of a push. On the carry, I was checking out one of the Northern Illinois defenders. Looked like he got popped in the face. Melvin Rice, number two. Helmet went flying. Now we get into the hurry, hurry. The hurry, hurry offense. Okay. Play coming in from the sideline. No hurry. And Merriweather is back. Good to see. And he will take the handoff. Merriweather makes a man miss. Merriweather has a first down and a whole lot more. Out near the 34-yard line, 33-34. Real nice run, so his knee is feeling okay. Here's the other thing. You've got a young guy like this. He knows where he's at on the field. He gets out of bounds. He stops the clock. Important. Toss, flags, fly. Gang of red shirts were chasing him down. Armand Robinson was the man who was being pursued, but flags go flying as the ball was in the air. We have an illegal procedure penalty on Miami. I mean, you talk, this is atypical of a Shane Montgomery team. There's a word we use in football, it's called poise. You cannot lose your poise. Formation, only six on the line. Penalized five yards, previous spot. Repeat first down. There's never a good time for a penalty, ever. 
but this is very untimely for he Miami in this situation. You start to move the ball down the field, you start to get a little bit of field position, a minute, four seconds left on the clock. Now, play calling becomes more difficult. Bratton, the single back set. Three wide receiver formation. Rodabaugh looking, looking. Dumps it off to Bratton. He is knocked down right around the 31 yard line. Brandon Bice came over from his DN spot to make the hit. Northern Illinois keep, has to keep the football inside and in front of the defense, within the perimeter of the defense. Delay handoff, Bratton. He will pick up a chunk of yardage out to the 40 yard line with 19 seconds left. Bice again on the hit. Timeout, First timeout for the Miami Red Hawks. And welcome to everybody out in Oxford, Ohio that is watching today. Well, now you bring your team over to the side. You talk to your team. You make sure everybody's on the same page. This is a situation you can't afford a penalty. You can't afford, the quarterback has to take care of the football. Talk about taking care of the football. What does that mean? You're not going to put the football in harm's way. This is where you're not going to take that little chance that you may, may have taken, you know, when, with a little bit more time on the clock. This is where you want to make sure that if, even if we go in at the, at the halftime with the score 10-7, we're still in the football game. We don't want to give Northern Illinois any type of a psychological lift at this point in time with 19 seconds left. Take care of the football. Everybody on the same page. Nice crowd on hand here. Stands on the west side of the stadium are packed to the gills. On an absolutely spectacular day. I mean, it is spectacular. Chamber Maddie's of Commerce. Pub and Grill, Chamber of Commerce. Show. It's phenomenal. Our old home, you and I used to both live together. Rodabaugh up the gut, slides down. Just short of the 50 with 14 seconds left. They wind the clock, and Rodabaugh spikes it to stop the clock. First and 10 at the 48 with 11.8 seconds left. A little bit of an intermediate pass here. Get the ball down the field. Spike the ball if you have to, if you have to again. Try to get in field goal range. Myself, I don't take a shot into the end zone here. Maybe something, some outs, uh, some uh, put a, uh, a wide receiver in a position to get out of bounds. Now the chess game begins. Check those flags out in the south end zone, and they are blowing a bit into the face of the Miami Redhawks, making a field goal try for Parsegian. Uh, that much more difficult. Good open field tackle. A flag flies for a late hit. That is exactly what Northern Illinois did not want to do, commit a foolish penalty. Pat Schiller is going to get flagged for a late hit after Bratton was knocked down. I believe it's a good call. And by the way, Rodabaugh is limping to the sideline. Dead ball, Dead ball. Personal, personal foul, number 29, defense. Penalized 15 yards, automatic first down. I think it's a good call. I think it is a good call. There's a dump He comes off in pass. late with the shoulder. He's down. I mean, he is he is down. He was down. Absolutely for agree a, with you. A, bad, a, bad penalty. Time out. Now, this right now, this is an interesting situation with four Miami point eight down to one timeout left. Right. Four point eight seconds left on the clock. Well, Fatty's Pub and Grill halftime show is right around the corner. All right, you're sitting at the 27-yard uh, line. You're looking at 44 yards plus into the wind. And the wind is pretty good. Take a look at the flags in the south end zone. They are coming in pretty good. That's the first penalty, by the way, on Northern Illinois. So there, there is a breeze coming at the kicker. Nathan Parsegi and his grand, his, it is his great uncle, is era. the great era Parsegi. I, I don't... Uh, use that term lightly, the great era Parsegian. A Miami of Ohio 
graduate, a Miami of Ohio player, head football coach at Miami of Ohio, and maybe one of the finest gentlemen that I've ever met in this game. And part of the great Miami cradle of coaches. Parsegian puts it up. It is good. He's got it from 45 yards. Nathan Parsegian drills a field goal. And after two quarters of play, we are all even. That is a huge shot in the arm off the Schiller penalty. <laughs> What about the hang time on that, that field goal? That ball was up wow. there forever. That it hit a... that gust of wind and it just hung up there. Good strong leg by this young guy. Great, great technique. The Huskies will go to their locker room, probably wondering how we could dominate time of possession, dominate yardage, and look up and say, we're all even. You have to be disciplined as a defensive player. The reason they were able to kick that field goal is obviously because of a foolish penalty. Let's go to Jim Blaney. All right, thank you very much, David. Jerry, let's talk about the positive. Your team dominated for most of that half, played very, very well. Well, the, the big thing is, is we moved the ball and, and uh, we didn't, you know, we missed a field goal and then we made a mistake in the kicking game. You know, we didn't get the ball kicked where it needed to be kicked and they got a big play and now they got back in and we had a dumb penalty. So, you know, uh, we got to go back to work and it's a 0-0 game and, and got to come out and play in the second half. So as you address your guys at halftime, what do you say to them to make sure that you, because really it's two plays that changed that first half. Uh, that's part of football, you know, there's eight or nine plays in the game and that's two of them. So we got to get the other seven or eight. Jerry, thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, David, back to you. All right, thank you, Jim and Coach Kill. So, 10-10, we are at the half. Lots coming up on the Fatty's Pub and Grill halftime show. Northern Illinois 10, Miami 10. Come on back, enjoy halftime with us. Air One Wireless, let's get it on. Looking for a wireless phone and service? With 15 locations to serve you, Air One Wireless is a leader in Sprint phone sales and service. Our experienced staff can help find the right phone and plan for your needs. And we're always there to support our customers after the sale. I'm Hunter Hillenmeyer of the Chicago Bears. For service after the sack, go to Air One Wireless. In Joliet at Essington and Caton Farm Roads, plus locations in Morris, Diamond, Lockport, and Plainfield. Advance your career with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. I was able to balance my MBA with my professional life as well as my personal life. And best of all, NIU's MBA program is AACSB accredited and affordable. I was impressed with the knowledge and experience of the professors, and the program provided me with a well-rounded business education. The affordability and convenient locations made my decision easy, and it made my MBA a reality. Designed for the working professional, the MBA program at Northern Illinois University. Jumpstart your career today. Have work to do? You need a truck. Step up to the best. It's GMC Truck Month. Get professional grade engineering, power, payload, and fuel efficiency. Like the Sierra 1500 with better available V8 fuel economy than Toyota Tundra. It's time to go to work. It's GMC Truck Month. Now get 0% APR financing or 5,000 purchase bonus cash on the 2008 GMC Sierra. See your local Buick Pontiac GMC dealer. Every night, there's just one place to be. The best damn sports show, period. Come on in and be our guest for Sports Television's Nightly Party. Ladies and gentlemen. The world's greatest late night sports show is just getting started. The best damn sports show, period. Weeknights on Comcast Sportsnet. School is in session, and so are high school sports on Comcast Sportsnet. You won't need supplies with coverage like this as High School Lights brings you previews. The staggering numbers are hard to believe. Interviews. That's been great. I think I get more out of it than they do, though. And the latest scores in the Chicagoland area. Get ready, Windy City, to be blown away by the best high school sports program in Chicago. High School Lights, presented by Farmers Insurance, every Friday night at 1030 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans, best friend. Welcome back to DeKalb, everybody. This is the Fatties Pub and Grill Halftime Show. Fatties, the official pre- and post-game tailgate place of NIU football. Northern Illinois 10, Miami 10 at the half here in DeKalb. Jim Blaney joined by Dave Grant, the head wrestling coach here at Northern Illinois. And Dave, 
Exciting news for your team because obviously a fine program you're building, but you've got evidence the guys are getting it done in the classroom as well. You're nationally ranked as far as the cumulative grade point average of your team. Yeah, we really stress that with our young men that work hard on and off the mat. And uh, we just really believe in discipline, getting them up early in the morning, getting them to class, and then uh, really working them hard in both directions, on that mat and, and in the classroom. But I would have to imagine that the discipline it takes to be an outstanding wrestler fits in pretty well with being disciplined enough to get your classwork done as well. Yeah, it, it all, we look for that type of athlete. We, when we recruit, we look for the total package. A guy that's uh, getting it done and uh, on the wrestling mat is, is a big thing. But guys are going to stay with us for five years and to become uh, work toward being a national champ and an All-American. Talk a little bit more about that since we're on the subject. Be a little bit more specific about the kind of athlete, the kind of young man that, in your opinion, fits the model of a Northern Illinois wrestler. Well, first of all, they have to really want to be here. They have to want to be a Husky. Uh, they have to uh, want to be a hard worker. That's a big thing. That's our, our key strategy is hard work. And they have to be coachable and a good citizen. And those are the things we really look for and obviously a great wrestler. There's been some unbelievably positive changes for all the athletic programs here at Northern Illinois, but specifically for your, your team, you've gotten some new facilities you don't have to share anymore, and you've got your own thing. How important is that for the development of your program? Well, we're looking to bring in the top-ranked uh, recruits in the country. And when you have a fine facility like the Jordan Center with all the great things it provides, and then our wrestling room, is, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a huge thing for us to bring in these top-caliber wrestlers. Talk a little bit about Pat McLemore because he's coming back, he'll try and defend a MAC championship, and he did that, and he's coming in this year as a redshirt sophomore, correct? Yeah, yeah he's just uh, he's a highly uh, motivated, intense young man. Uh, he was third in the country as a, as a senior at the high school nationals. He's a two-time Ohio State champ and a real motivated kind of guy, uh, and uh, we're really excited to have him back. He ended up pinning the returning MAC champion last year, and was uh, two matches away from being an All-American, so really excited about that. And plus the fact, too, in the process, he beat the number one and two seated wrestlers in his weight class, correct? That is right. Uh, and then uh, we really have a young team. That's that's the positive thing. We have one senior this year. Last year, we, we uh, basically started six freshmen and uh, upset six uh, fifth-ranked Northwestern. So we're really pleased with their effort. They're just uh, mean and lean and hungry to go, and that's what we're looking for. A moment ago, you described the rest you're looking for as disciplined and hungry, but doesn't that pretty much describe any kid who wrestles? Yeah, it can. <laughs> they like to eat, so you got to be careful, too. But, uh, yeah, you know, having that guy that he, he's coming to college and he's starting his career, and he's not done with his career. So that's really what we're looking for, a guy that wants to develop once he gets here, and it just stays motivated because this is a very difficult sport. I know you can't talk specifically about recruits, but I have to ask you about this weekend and the weather today in particular. Yeah, okay. For you as somebody bringing in athletes and recruiting people, the Chamber of Commerce did okay for yeah, you in this yeah, weather today, didn't it's they? Great. It's quite an experience here. I've always said that about Northern. So, uh, just the, the, the way the community comes together with the football games, and um, it's, it's wonderful. It's, and, and I've been to a lot of great colleges, and, th and, and this university is uh, second to none as far as that. The athletic program as a whole, so many parts of the athletic program are on the rise, and there is that theory that a rising tide lifts all boats. Does that indeed hold true for the programs here at Northern Illinois? As the football program continues to stay at its high level, the basketball program comes back to a high level. Does it indeed lift all the other programs along with them? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, what, 12 or 14 programs have just recently got new facilities since so too. And, uh, it's wonderful. I mean, everybody's uh, every building you walk into is practically new now, and it's not just with the athletic building. It's it's also with all the other buildings on campus. So it's an exciting time here at Northern Illinois. Dave, thank you so much yeah, for your time. You, Good luck yeah. in the season coming up. We are at halftime here at Northern Illinois. It's Northern Illinois 10, Miami 10. Dave Kaplan and Bob Camille are back after this timeout. Husky fans, Fatty's Pub & Grill in DeKalb is your official pre- and post-game NIU football headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our big screens or having some of our famous grilled food out in our beer garden, Fatty's is the place to be. Reserve your date for your holiday party at Fatty's. And if you're looking for catering for your next event, Fatty's also offers full service on and off-site catering. For more information, go to fattyspub.com or call 815-758-7737. Let's get it on. 
Looking for a wireless phone and service? With 15 locations to serve you, Air One Wireless is a leader in Sprint phone sales and service. Our experienced staff can help find the right phone and plan for your needs. And we're always there to support our customers after the sale. I'm Hunter Hillenmeyer of the Chicago Bears. For service after the sack, go to Air One Wireless. In Joliet at Essington and Caton Farm Roads, plus locations in Morris, Diamond, Lockport, and Plainfield. Don't miss a thing life has to offer. The Hauser Ross Eye Institute offers a number of options to help you see better. LASIK is just one of a number of choices from Hauser Ross. New lens technology can help you see near, far, and everything in between. Beyond contacts, beyond LASIK, new lens technology offers an exciting choice in vision correction. Leave it to the experienced doctors of Hauser Ross to have the best choices for your vision. See all that life has to offer at the Hauser Ross Eye Institute in Sycamore. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons bookstore, you're entering Husky territory. VCB is the official site for NIU athletics. Featuring the new NIU logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or a fan of NIU athletics, the Village Commons bookstore is your Husky headquarters. Visit us in DeKalb or call us toll free 800-700-4868 or on the web at www.bcbs.com. It's a bone crusher, like a Bob Rorman deal. It's Bob Rorman's Bare Bones Bonanza at Arlington Chrysler Jeep and Dodge in Buffalo Grove. New 08 Town & Country van, 24 miles per gallon, entertainment system, only $23,995. Bob Rorman. Nobody beats Bob. Nobody. Bob Rorman, Arlington Chrysler Jeep and Dodge in Buffalo Grove, one mile east of Route 53 on Dundee Road. Welcome back. We are here at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. David Kaplan and Bob Kamel with you. It's the Fatty's Pub and Grill halftime show. Fatty's Pub and Grill is the official pregame, postgame spot for NIU Athletics. All right, an interesting game. If you look at the statistical breakdown, you go, wow, Northern Illinois must be killing them. They're tied at 10. Absolutely. A great Mid-American matchup. As you mentioned before, David, it doesn't get any better than this. Northern Illinois, Miami of Ohio, great tradition in all of college football. Two teams hanging in there, playing tough football, being hurt, both teams, by foolish penalties. One of the things you have to coach against, foolish penalties. And that is what has hurt both teams. It hurt Northern Illinois, it hurt Miami early on, and it let Northern Illinois get into the game, then it hurt Northern Illinois with a foolish penalty, giving young Parsegan an opportunity to kick the game-tying field goal. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights, and there were some doozies. Nico Brown, a big first half. This was right off the get-go. Real nice seal, and he had a good run. Great vision. It's all blocked up inside. He took it outside, hit that little seam. Good job by the tackle there, folks. Excellent job. He hits that seam, the lateral seam, and he's gone. That little burst, single. There it is right there. This young guy from Moss Point, Mississippi, came a long way to play Division I football at Northern Illinois, but it's done very well. And then Grady goes up top, finds Landon Cox, his first career touchdown. Grady celebrates. Oh, well, made that Miami play goal. Of Ohio. Oh, Miami did a real nice job on a punt return. Eugene Harris off one of the directional line drive kicks. Well, he, he kicked a directional kick from inside their own 40-yard line. I disagree with that. That's where you're going to pump the football. What happens here is with that directional kick, he feels it clean. The coverage is actually behind him. A very, very astute play by this young man. And then a bad penalty in the waning seconds of the half. There's a short gain, and there comes a late hit by Schiller. 15 yards, moving into field goal range, and then young Nathan Parsegian. Yes, he's related, folks. And he drills a 44-yarder into the win. No foolish penalties. You have to coach against foolish penalties. It's a matter of uh, discipline. Look at those numbers. Rushing yards, 121 to 58. Total yards of domination. Time of possession, 19 to 10. But you look at penalties, seven to one, but that one was big. Well, the only statistic that counts right now is the score of the game. Statistics really don't always tell the story. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But what you see here is a Miami team that's become relentless. They start to get into a rhythm offensively from the booth down to the field. We can do this, we can do that. You know, adjustments are just not for the halftime. 
great coaching staffs make adjustments, and it's cumulative and consecutive throughout the course of the football game. Bobby, let me ask you, if you're in there, Jerry Kill, what is he saying? What are you hearing him say to his team right now? Well, it's 10 to 10. He's going to talk about it 0 to 0. He has to talk about penalties. He has to talk about the ebb and flow of the game. He has to let his assistant coaches make adjustments offensively, defensively, kicking game, then bring the team together and get everybody on the same page. All right, Shane Montgomery, what's he say to his guys? Because, as you said, stats don't always tell the whole story, but it has to concern him time of possession. Well, the first thing I'm going to do if, if I'm Coach Montgomery, I'm going to address the penalties. We have to be smart, guys. We're playing on the road. We have to play a clean game. We're the underdog, but we're in the game. And build on the psychological field goal, so to speak, at the end of the at the end of the half by Parsegan and build on that from a mental standpoint to know that hey, we've got a great shot here to do something very special. All right, Northern Illinois and Miami. They're tied at 10. We'll come back with the second half kick. It's right around the corner. You are watching college football at Comcast Sports Net. Everyone has a special talent or aptitude. At NIU, world-class faculty work closely with each and every student to help them identify and develop their own unique skills. NIU students participate in groundbreaking research, get hands-on work experience, explore their ambitions, and find their niche. It's the hallmark of an educational experience that is second to none. Discover your genius at NIU. Imagine. A place where you'll find a hammer for every nail, a blade for every saw, a bit for every drill, and a drill for every bit. Well, you can stop imagining because that place is real, people, and it's called Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Contractors and do-it-yourselfers know they can count on Blaine's for the best name brand tools and hardware at honest low prices. The Home Improvement Center at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Just imagine. Hey Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations, the Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. Sunday night at 8 on Comcast Sportsnet. It's the show every runner in the city of Chicago and beyond has been waiting for. Runner's Ultimate Network proudly presents the first ever Marathon Mayhem. Mile by mile coverage of the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Highlights and interviews featuring elite runners including Ryan and Sarah Hall and you the casual runner. Marathon Mayhem, presented by Running for Kicks in Palos Heights. Sunday night at 8 on Comcast Sportsnet. Visit runnersultimatenet.com. What do you want? What do you say about? Peace. Justice. Equality. Truth. Accountability. Equal opportunity. A healthy economy. A healthy environment. Education. Civil rights. Human rights. Freedom. Our honor. Our country. The American dream. Voice your vote. Voice your vote. Voice your vote. One vote. One chance. Register today. One vote. One chance. 10-10, we are ready to get second half action underway here in just a moment. Take a look at our TCF Bank scoreboard update. Hey folks, TCF Bank is open seven days. Toledo, a big win at the big house at Michigan. Ohio leads Kent State late fourth quarter, 26-19. Central Michigan at the half, a three point lead over Temple. You've got number 25 Ball State on the road at Western Kentucky, really good team. Buffalo, 14-3 over Western Michigan in the third. And Army squeaks by Eastern Michigan. Thoughts? Ball State's a good team. Ball State is an excellent football team. I think with Nate Davis, one of the best quarterbacks, not only in the Mid-American Conference, but one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He'll an unbelievably quick release. They are a well-coached team. They play great defense. Uh, they, they avoid foolish penalties. Uh, Brady Hoke's done a, a, just a magnificent job there at Ball State with this football team. All right, down to the sideline. And let's talk to Jim Blaney. Jimmy. 
David, thank you very much. This is an incredibly important half of football coming up for Northern Illinois because remember, they've played the majority of their games, in fact, all but one, on the road until today. And they have five of the next seven games here at home. Well, certainly, they'll want to give one back by dropping a game at home, so it's critical for their standing in the MAC and how they play out the rest of the season to get this victory at home. By the way, on DeMarcus Grady, he came out of the locker room. He was one of the last guys out. He has a little bit of a problem with his left ankle. It's touch and go right now. He's available, but it's a question as to whether or not he'll be back in the game. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jim. And there was just a shot of that coach right there in the white shirt walking by Chandler Harness. That's P.J. Fleck. We'll see if we can get another shot of him. P.J. was one of the great players in the history of this program. Played in the National Football League with the San Francisco 49ers. And then when his days as a pro ended, he came back and joined the staff here. And let me tell you something, P.J. Fleck, one heck of a football coach. You know, his future, wide receiver. Oh, David, he has such an unbelievable future in this business. His demeanor, his personality. You know, and there's so much to be said for having experienced the culture of Northern Illinois University and being, being able to impart that upon the young guys that come here. He's been here. He's played on this field. He knows what it is to be successful here. There's a lot, a lot to be said for bringing those types of guys back to come and work in your program. You know, we saw that scoreboard. There will be a lot of angst in Ann Arbor, trust me. Toledo went into the big house one and four. One and four. And wins and, at the big house. And, and one in the big house. That is a huge win for Toledo Tom Amstutz. And how about Texas upsetting number one Oklahoma? So number one goes down again. Well, as I see it, and. University of Southern California, I still think, is, is, is in a class by the, of, of their own. In the even though they lost. Yes, even though they lost. Pete Carroll, I think, is one of the best coaches in the country. Salerno will put it in play. Driving kick. That's going to go out of the back of the end zone. Actually, it'll be caught right at the back of the end zone. Jamal and Rogers made the catch and wisely took a knee. That is a luxury. Anytime you have a kicker that can kick the ball in, into the end zone. Well, he's also downwind no today. I understand Wish that. I was on the team uh, downwind. David, David, I've seen downwind where guys have kicked the ball out of bounds and the ball goes to the 35-yard line. That's where those big offensive linemen grab a kicker and say, what do you have to do all day? The field is almost 58 yards wide. My goodness, can't we keep that little football somewhere between those out-of-bounds markers? <laughs> Thomas Merriweather is back as the single back set. He takes the handoff. Merriweather hit hard. Gang of red shirts. All in there. Tracy Wilson, David Bryant, a number of red clad defenders came roaring in to put the brakes on Merriweather. Four yard gain, why? Good pad level. When I talk about pad level, I talk about being your own blocker. Getting leverage underneath the defender, making the stack go back in the direction that you want it to go, not in the direction that the defender wants it to go. He plays bigger than 5'10", 199. And off Merriweather, picking his way. Again, Bryant among a group of Northern Illinois Huskies. L Larry English also there. Rodabaugh has not played a bad football game at quarterback for no, Miami. At all. And, and, and we talked early on about him being the more experienced quarterback. And I talk about getting your team into the right play. What does that mean? That means when the play is signal in, you have audibles, as I mentioned before. You have to make that decision based upon what the defense gives you and the defensive alignment. Bratton now in at tailback, replacing Thomas Merriweather. Rodabaugh, and they blow it dead, flags fly. A false start on Miami, just what you talked about. False start, 55, offense, penalized five yards, remains third down. Steve Sutter. Just a little bit of a hitch, but that's just enough to get the penalty called. There was movement. Hang in there. I mean, even if, if, if the crowd noise becomes like, just get a look inside. Just get a glance. You can't have that as an offensive player. Just cannot have it. And we've got another flag. Crowd's getting into it. And I think it's going to be another false start penalty. We'll, well see if they were drawn. Sutter 55 on the, uh, on the first one. That, he's a senior. That's inexcusable. Well, what happens here is either crowd noise, the inflection of the quarterback, or just 
being in your stance and just wanting to get set. You start to, the better the guy that playing over you when you pass block, the more apt that this is to happen. You don't want to get beat to the outside. Now they're but right it, down but in front of he's the a student. senior. They're he's right, a senior. Right in front of the student section. That one was on DeFranco, and Larry English is coming from his side. You might understand it. We're out of bounds, going down. They got a paw on English, pushed him out of the play, and Brandon Bice cleaned it up. That when you saw that hitch, okay, he wanted to take the outside away when he start when he went offside. Now the defender he takes away the outside, he comes underneath and makes the play. You have to Sutter has to keep riding him out, ride him out, ride him out. Instead, he gives him that outside move, and it's called a counter move. He comes back inside and makes the sack. Miko Brown is deep, a lot of pressure on the punt. He gets it away into the wind. Miko Brown says, give me a fair catch, and he makes it in Miami territory at the 49-yard line. So that will be Northern Illinois' first possession of the second half. 12.41 to go in the third. Down to the sidelines, Jim Blaney. All right, David, thank you very much. DeMarcus Grady's still on the sideline, so it's going to be Harnish going in to start the second half for Northern Illinois. Back to you. All right, so there you have it. So it's going to be a different kind of attack. It will not be the run the quarterback as much, you would think, in the second half. No, I think you'll see a more traditional offense. You can't have a young guy do what he can't do. You have to play to his abilities, and you have to make calls, offensive calls, mm -hmm. that enhance his abilities. Run! Miko Brown trying to turn the corner. Miko Brown makes something out of nothing there. That's pure speed. Pure speed, a little bit of a shake, and a lot of determination. Travis Craven was the man that ran well, him out. Here, here's a Miko Brown type of running back. What I see, you get a running back, David, give him the ball, give him the ball. Give, and, and if he's successful, he wants to come off, wave him off. No, 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 you're doing too well. Because every carry he makes is like, uh, uh, you know, it's like information going into a computer. Where will the cut be? How will, how does my right tackle take that defensive left tackle on? And on and on. They start to get better. They almost start to look refreshed into the fourth quarter. Harness play action, looking, looking, going down the field, incomplete. He was looking deep down the field for Nathan Palmer. Robbie Wilson was there in coverage, just didn't have enough air under that football. Okay, here's what, what freezes a defense is a great fake. He had a great fake, and you know what, you coach faking. The one thing he did was he rushed the throw. Great fake here, everybody pulls up. Nice block there by Brown. Now he forces to throw a little more air under that football, and that ball needs to be thrown over the outside shoulder toward the sideline, not between the defender and the wide receiver. Threw the ball to the wrong side of the wide receiver. Harness play action again. Looking, he's gonna keep it. And he'll be dragged down right at the line of scrimmage. And Northern Illinois' offense goes absolutely nowhere on their first possession. Joe Coniglio, who is out of Rockford, Illinois. It's a homecoming for him. He's fired up. He steps up and makes a play. Well, this is all on coverage. This is all on coverage. No place to go with the football. You, know, you get sacks because of great pass rush ability, but you also get sacks because of great coverage. Eugene Harris, who has the punt return for a touchdown, for Miami's only touchdown. Northern's only touchdown came via pass, Grady, Marcus Grady to Landon Cox. Dit Benner, punt is away, driving spiral kick will hit and go into the end zone. So, first to 10 Miami when we come back from the 20, you're watching college football on Comcast Sportsnet. Advance your career with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. I was able to balance my MBA with my professional life as well as my personal life. And best of all, NIU's MBA program is AACSB accredited and affordable. I was impressed with the knowledge and experience of the professors, and the program provided me with a well-rounded business education. The affordability and convenient locations made my decision easy, and it made my MBA a reality. Designed for the working professional, the MBA program at Northern Illinois University. Jumpstart your career today. I thought it was crazy feeding in the fall. I always feed in the fall. But 
It's the best time. Feed your lawn in the fall. Fall, fall, fall. What the fall feeding does is build the roots. That's when the roots sort of want nutrition. I give my lawn Scott's Winter Garden. It's like a root building machine. It builds your lawn from the roots up. Next year, you get this. Keeps it strong through winter, keeps it strong the whole year long. The best time to feed is when it'll do the most good. There's no substitute for the fall feeding, trust me. It is the best thing you could do for your lawn. I use Scott's Winter Garden. All right, 10, 10, 11, 21 left in the third on a spectacular afternoon in DeKalb, Illinois. The Husky faithful are out in force. Nice crowd on hand. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, and Jim Blaney. Our ace spotter is Todd Armour. Toss over the top, little high, little far. Bring up a second and 10 for Miami. Chris Miami, Givens was the intended receiver. Miami needs to get in, to, to move the football to a point where even if they have to punt, they can get be in good field position. They've played on a long field all day. I mean, my goodness, you know, and, and they have the ability that this is a huge series, David, uh, for Miami, a huge series. They have to move the sticks. Don't try to get it all at once. Hold the football, keep Northern Illinois offense off the field, get the rhythm and take care of the football. Bratton, the single back. They hand it to Bratton, and he rumbles for eight yards. Real nice run on a second and 10, bring up a very manageable third and two. Bradley Pruitt came over to make the hit from the defensive secondary. I will tell you, both of these defenses, both of these defenses, the old term, have a mind for the fray. They are both hard hitting Division I Mid American Conference defenses. Rodabaugh looking, throwing. It is caught. First down, Miami. Real nice catch by Dustin Woods on a good throw by Rodabaugh. Move the chains. This is putting a frozen rope right where it had to be. Watch the wide receiver's hands. They are under the football. And I mean, he put that right where it needed to be. The corner was, had great coverage. Move the chains, move the chains. Merriweather back in the backfield, replacing Bratton. They'll give it to Merriweather. And a gang of red shirts will turn him back. He may have gained a yard, maybe. Schiller led the charge. Miami's offensive line initially had a really, really good push against the defensive front of Northern Illinois. The linebackers recovered long enough to be able to make that play. Get a hat on a hat become a blocker, even though you're a defender, and then let the linebackers come in and clean up. Rodabaugh looking, looking, pass batted, and nearly intercepted by Larry English. Heads up play by Rodabaugh. Bice got a hand on it. Watch English with the pressure. Bice tipped it, and English nearly got the INT. He is so quick, he is so strong. Then it's batted in the air by Vice English going for it. And I think Rodabaugh might have got a piece of it. There it is, tipped in the air. A quarterback's worst nightmare. And Rodabaugh batted it down before English could get the pick. Franco got away with the call there because his hand was all over Larry English's face mask. Third and eight. Rodabaugh looks, finds Merriweather, and he rumbles for a first down. Real nice job, Bobby, as you talk about squaring his shoulders and taking it upfield. Well, the, the, you know, and one of the things, the, what you have here is a fundamental pitch and a fundamental catch. Settles into the pocket, he stops, he stops his motor, chokes his motor down, as, as I always say, doesn't continue to run the route to take himself into the defender. Now he catches the football, turns with the opposite hand of where the ball is being cradled, Gets upfield and it becomes a fullback again. Hand off Merriweather, and he is just across the 
50, we'll see where they spot. It might be right at the 50, a gain of four, second and six. Big push by Schiller Mike Kraus on the, on the center, on the Miami center defensive uh, lineman. Mike Kraus out of Germantown, Wisconsin. Good pad under pad. What did the back do? He made the cutoff of that. And that's what you do as a running back coach. You, you, you have the back run right at you. You have a pad or maybe a, even a piece of paper. You put it to your right, he's got to run to his left. And, and, and opposite, he made a nice cut off of, off of, uh, off of the push there. Run about barking out signals. Going to give it to Merriweather, and he is knocked down. After a gain of maybe a couple, it's going to bring up third and a long three or four. We'll call it third and four. That vaunted defensive front of Northern Illinois is starting to look just a little bit fatigued right now. Good drive for Miami. Well, the deal is in college football anymore, if I mentioned a chess game, okay? Miami commits X amount of players to the pass. Northern Illinois now has to adjust. They have a different defensive package for every substitution that Miami makes. Radaba looking, looking, throws, finds his man. Move the sticks, another Miami first down. A great drive, Donovan Potter made the catch. Northern Illinois was in press coverage at that time. What is press coverage? Every single man covered by a Northern Illinois defender. And what happens is man-to-man -man coverage. You can beat man-to-man -man coverage when you run over and under routes as we see right here. That's a, that is a linebacker out on a wide receiver. Patrick George, the D-back out of Chicago, came up, made the hit. And here's a gang of red shirts rising to the occasion there. Led by DJ Perkle, the six-footer, 270 pounds. It's a sophomore out of Frankfurt, Illinois. That's the Lincoln Way area. Good football down there. Yeah. Great, great high school football. Lincoln Way East High School. Great high school football in this area. So a tribute to the fine high school football coaches uh, in the state of Illinois, is, you know, as well as where you know Northern Illinois recruits. They, they you know, you, you have to, you have to get the high school coach involved and give him all the respect. Bratton catches the pass, makes a man miss. Bratton, very close to another Miami first down, and I think he's got it. You know, I talk about blocking in space. Bob Gully got out there and really, really was zeroing in on one of those corners and just whiffed. But the back made the, here he is, whoa. But he was still able to make the cut off of, off of the block. Actually, off of the missed block. Dustin Woods, good job going down and getting, uh, as, as we mentioned before, these guys, these wide receivers have done a nice job of blocking. You want to be a complete wide receiver, you have to be able to block. Bob and Gully, you have a big to man. have a mental attitude about blocking. Bob Gully, one of the 300 pounders on that Miami line. Rodabaugh has time, looking, throws, and we'll see what they call it. They are going to say that that is a catch. The Huskies are arguing. Let's take a look at this one, David. Dustin Woods made the catch. Let's see if he caught it. No, he did not. Looks like it bounced in. That they're is going why to it. Shane Montgomery grabbed his quarterback and said, run the play quickly, whatever the play may be. It's under review. This was not a catch. This was Take not a, a look catch. Again, see what you can see. A little bit over underthrown. He threw it off his back leg. There is this. Well, well. Let's see if we can see it here. It all just appeared to skip just before his hands got down. His hands are not underneath the football. His hands are wider than the, the where the trajectory of the football is. Couldn't get his hands inside because he was down a little. I do. I will say he did not catch. Did not catch the football. Did not catch. The football. Or peak here, David. Great camera work by our guys. Great work. There it is. The ball's down. That's not a catch. That is what 
baseball guys call trapping the ball. That is trapping the ball. Mask is very exactly correct. This is a tough question. Are you over the Chicago Cubs? No. Yeah. That'll I'll, take a long time. I'll leave it at that. That will take a long time. That was trapping the ball. But I, I like replaying these situations. So do I. I like it if it's done in a timely fashion. That the play, that get the call, make the call, make the decision, get it down on the field. When it drags out after a while, what's to see anymore? I mean, the ball, it was clearly the ball was trapped. We're gonna find out. Well, this this where you're just standing around and, and, and uh, but you know, you have to take this time Following as review, a coach. The ball skipped to the receiver. The pass is incomplete. It will be second and 10. I knew that. 27 yard <laughs> we line. had it. We had it two minutes ago for you. I mean, you want to run after a play like that, get out on the field and get the ball snapped. Now we go with the packages. Guys coming in, guys coming up. It's to a point right now where they assign a coach. He's, he's, the, he's the traffic policeman. You come in, you come out. There's hand signals, they're this, they're that. They're calling each other. It's amazing that they can get it done in such a timely fashion with such success. Bratton cuts it back up. Bratton, we'll see where they spot this one. I think he's going to be short. But real nice blocking scheme up front by Miami. Well, they get a hat on a hat, a man on a man, and they get a push. They come off on the linebacker. Great second effort, yet another push. And again, I can't emphasize enough, with that pullback, he starts to get his hand down, and he starts to get pad under pad. He's gonna get those extra yards after the first contact, provided he keeps his legs moving. Merriweather is the man in on the single back set on a third and one for Miami. Big play for the Red Hawks. Big play for the Northern Illinois defense. Radabaugh to the end zone, and it is dropped. Tough, tough play to catch that, though, in his defense. Armand Robinson. I disagree. <laughs> you have to make that catch, David. He looked over his inside shoulder. The ball's, ball's thrown on the wrong side. I know shoulder. that, but you still have to be able to make the adjustment. This, I, I'll, I'll go 50-50, quarterback to receiver. Run underneath the ball. Make the adjustment. I'll say that that's a very tough catch. Well, lengthy drive. Northern Illinois' defense is going to need to catch their breath. Nathan Parsegian. Snap. Set. Kick is good. Miami has the lead. 4.53 left in the third. I'm out on the field. We'll be right back on Comcast Sports Net. Looking for a wireless phone and service? With 15 locations to serve you, Air One Wireless is a leader in Sprint phone sales and service. Our experienced staff can help find the right phone and plan for your needs. And we're always there to support our customers after the sale. I'm Hunter Hillenmeyer of the Chicago Bears. For service after the sack, go to Air One Wireless. In Joliet at Essington and Caton Farm Roads, plus locations in Morris, Diamond, Lockport, and Plainfield. Where do you get your Chicago sports news? Level 1, local nightly news. You only get a few minutes. Level 2, national sports network. You might not see Chicago teams. Top level, sports night on Comcast Sportsnet. Extended highlights, breaking news, in-depth interviews, and news from Chicago sports fans like you. Sports night, elevate your Chicago sports coverage. Every night on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Every week, Bears Blitz is the show for you, the diehard Bears fan. Wednesdays, it's all about the offense, as Lovey Smith, Kyle Orton, and Ron Turner address the media. Thursdays, the defense has the mic as Lovey Smith, Bob Babbage, and Brian Urlacher talk X's and O's. Plus, Dan Jiggins tells you this week's keys to the game, and William Jackson has exclusive interviews from Hellas Hall. Bears Blitz, every Wednesday and Thursday at 4.30, only on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. All right, welcome back. Miami will kick off. Nathan Parsegian will put it back in play. Miami a 13-10 lead. 4.53 left in the third. Nico Brown and Ricky Kreider are deep, and 
Northern Illinois' defense has got to see their offense, Bob, put up some time because uh, they've got to be gassed. 4.53 left in the third quarter. 4.53 to play with the wind. Get the wind at your back. Short kick. It'll be taken and brought back to the 32-yard line. We've got a penalty flag. I think it's offside. Reed Cunningham made the catch of the short kick into the wind. Got a yellow flag sitting at the 34-yard line. Take a look at the Miami of Ohio, Miami, Ohio scoring drive, the Red Hawks scoring drive. Let's hear the call first. 4.50 left in the third. And the Miami Red Hawks with a 13-10 lead. Northern Illinois has to make a decision here as to whether you know they want to call off the, the penalty or they want to take it. And Would you Offside, do? kicking team, number 27. Penalty is tacked on to the end of the return. First down, Northern Illinois. Take a look at the scoring drive. 15 plays, 62 yards, took 628 to accomplish. Parsigi in a 35-yard field goal. His second field goal of the day. He also has a point after touchdown on the long punt return from Eugene Harris, and that has accounted for Miami's 13 points. Hand off to Miko Brown. He tries to turn the corner. Miko Brown ushers to the sideline after an eight-yard gain to the sidelines and third member of our crew, Jim Blaine. David, a couple of notes for you on defense. First of all, for Northern Illinois, starting weak side linebacker, John Tranchatella, he is out for the rest of the game because of an elbow injury. So Northern, their defense was out there for a long time. Now they're gonna have to make an adjustment. And for the Miami defense, they were on the bench for so long, they all got up and left the bench here. As a matter of fact, the managers were able to come over, fold all the towels, make it look nice and neat. These guys were over here for a long, long time. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Neat is good. Clean and neat home as they come back. Harnish hands off. Miko Brown will be very close to moving the sticks. We'll see where they spot this. David, Miami's drive was 15 plays. Most defenses that, have a goal of no drive over 12 plays. And that will be enough for a Northern Illinois first down. So re racket first and 10 Huskies at their own 47-yard line. Again, DeMarcus Grady started the game at quarterback, injured his ankle. He was gimpy on the sideline, but could come back. Chandler Harnett is at the controls. Hands off Miko Brown, makes one man miss. Miko Brown up the sideline. Miko Brown across the 20, knocked out near the 15. Robbie Wilson, number six, got a hand on him and saved the touchdown, but Miko Brown They'll spot it at the 17 yard line. Another big run. He just, when he hits a crease, he explodes. He explodes through the crease. Every, you have to have that extra gear. Nice job blocking up front. Everybody's got a hat, as I mentioned, a hat on a hat, and he's able to get upfield and make the play. Landon Cox actually did a nice oh. job downfield making a block. Excellent block. Excellent block by the wide receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Come back by Span, knocked down inside the five. Nico Brown, 11 carries, 101 now on the ground, and Span right there nearly took it to the house. I mean, when you talk about a fine, well-executed play and the blocking, the blocking up front. First and goal, Northern Illinois at the two. That well, if you're not gonna give the defense a lot of time to rest, at least find pay dirt. That technique of carrying the football high and against your shoulder pad, against your shoulder pad, that's, that's the Tiki Barber method. He's the first guy that I saw running with the football that way. And off Span, picks his way. Span breaks a tackle, and he's in. What an effort. What an outstanding effort. He was in the grasp. He was not going to be denied. Always a running back, young running backs, 
make sure you keep your legs moving. You got a chance. Brandon Stevens is down for Miami. Looked like he got banged up on the tackle. Watch his legs. Watch his legs. They never stop. They never stop. And then that extra effort. What a that was just an outstanding run. Times a back a running back. You have to make things happen for yourself. I mean, granted, you've got to have those big guys up front with a push, but you know, that's rewarding them. That's rewarding them when you run with that with that type of a, of a relentless attitude. Brandon Stevens looked like he hurt his knee on the play. That is what they are tending to. That's what they're working on right there. Northern Illinois needed this drive, David. They needed this drive in the third quarter here. In a big way. Absolutely. Great play calling. Great play calling by the Northern Illinois staff. They, they, they found soft spots. They seem to be running to the their, their offensive left. Miami's right. We take a look at the injury here to Brandon Stevens. There he comes in and gets kicked right in the side of the knee and on top of the knee. And he is in pain. So hate to see that. They are, they are checking out his knee. 16-13 pending a, an extra point try for the Huskies. I will tell you this, you get two mid-American football teams lining up on a Saturday afternoon and you are going to see tough, physical, well-coached football. What's the name of the linebacker that played here that you recruited out of Gordon Tech? Ron Delisi. That's the guy. He was a stud. Ron Delisi. I was always a big fan of his. I, David. Jerry Pettibone was the head football coach at that time, and Jerry said to me, Bob, how long are you going to stay on this kid? And I said, Jerry, until we get him. Everybody said he was just a little bit too short. His size didn't bother me at all. You talk about a tough kid and came out of Tom Winecki's Gordon Tech football program. I knew he was going to be and successful. Tom Winecki is now the assistant at Deerfield to his son, who is the head coach at Deerfield. Tom should always be around football, be around young people. He's a great, great man. Extra point try up, extra point try is perfect. Northern Illinois, a 17-13 lead over the Red Hawks of Miami. Chad Spann showing you extra effort as he finds the end zone. Don't miss a thing life has to offer. The Hauser Ross Eye Institute offers a number of options to help you see better. LASIK is just one of a number of choices from Hauser Ross. New lens technology can help you see near, far, and everything in between. Beyond contacts, beyond LASIK, new lens technology offers an exciting choice in vision correction. Leave it to the experienced doctors of Hauser Ross to have the best choices for your vision. See all that life has to offer at the Hauser Ross Eye Institute in Sycamore. Welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, Jim Blaney with you on Comcast Sportsnet's coverage of Mid-American Conference football, the Northern Illinois Huskies, the Miami Red Hawks. Jamal Rogers is the deep man. Mike Salerno ready to kick it away after Northern Illinois' touchdown drive. Put them back on top, 17-13. Another high, deep, driving kick and it will be downed in the end zone. And Miami will have it first and 10. Here's our University Plaza drive summary when you're in DeKalb, it's where to live. Chad Spann does the honors on a five play, 68 yard drive. It took just 218, Spann the two yard rumble. After contact, real nice run, gives the Huskies the lead again. I mean, that is the porch, so to speak, of the Jordan Center. What a gorgeous building. I, I can assure you, that football facility is good as any that you will come across. Great, great facility. Great facility from a practical standpoint, great facility to recruit to. 
Huskies trying to strip the football. Bradley Pruitt had a hand in there trying to strip it from Armand Robinson who made the catch. But you could see Bradley Pruitt, number 24, trying to rip the ball out. Well, Northern Illinois, the Husk defense right now, Northern Illinois, they have to come up big. They have to come up big in this series. Well, early in the series, you don't want another lengthy drive, you'll be winded. J.R. Taylor is now in at tailback for Miami. Number 38. They'll give it to J.R. Taylor. Picks his way. J.R. Taylor will move the chains. First down, Miami. Northern Illinois came with a blitz that time. Cuba on the well, when you get, when you start, when you start, start to blitz? When you start to blitz and come up field, that's when you start to get the, start to be able to run the football. Just those little draws, maybe a little screen, maybe an under screen. Why? It slows the likes of a Larry English down, if that's possible, because it gives him just a little bit to think about. Not just Larry English, the entire Northern Illinois defensive front. Got another false start penalty coming on Miami. Number 56, offense, five yards. I can Remains assure you, Coach Shane Montgomery will have some of the lads running as a result, perhaps 6.30 or seven o'clock in the morning as a result of these plays. Now, trivia question. We just saw that beautiful Husky dog. What is that dog's name? Victor E. Husky. Uh-uh. Diesel. Oh, Diesel's the dog. Victor's the mascot. There we go. Victor E. Husky. Hand off real nice. Cut back up the middle of the defense. Miami will pick up a huge chunk as Bradley Pruitt will drag down J.R. Taylor, who has seen some cover or some carries the last couple plays. Bradley Pruitt is banged up. He is, I think, rolled an ankle. And he heads right to the table. Well, credit to Dave DeFranco, Bob Bob Gully, Dustin Woods, those guys collapsing down the defense to the inside. Oh my goodness, great job by the wide receiver with the crack block, making it a legal crack block, albeit. Well executed play, David. Merriweather back in. He'll take it and carry the mail. Merriweather, near first down yardage. We'll see if he got it. Can't tell if that's a cramp, if that's an ankle. Could be a pull. We've got, a, we've got an offensive lineman that is down, Dave DeFranco, the big man. Just gave DeFranco Dave a bit is of a six call. four three ten, a senior out of Lagrange, Ohio. Preseason All Mid American left tackle. Let's go down the sidelines. Jim Blaney. All right, David, thank you very much. The injury update on Brandon Stevens. They checked his knee for stability and then said, oh, get up, walk around a little bit. So apparently everything checked out there, but his return right now is questionable. But he is up and around and trying to see if he can get it moving properly and maybe get back into the game. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. There's a look at Bradley Pruitt. And there is Dave DeFranco. So we're getting some casualties piling up, Bobby. Well, it's a hard-hitting game. I mean, th this, these are two teams that are just getting after each other. DeFranco's an outstanding left tackle. 6'4", 310-pound senior. Great future. My guess is this, this young guy will, next year will be playing on Sundays. And he will come off the field under his own power. Looks like it may be abdominal. He is uh, holding his right rib cage area. The big hoss. He'll be replaced by number 63, Kent Staudinger. Canton, Ohio. Young guy from Canton. Home of the Pro Football Hall, Hall of, Fame. of Fame. It's a third and one at the 44 of Miami. Hand off Merriweather. Merriweather moves the chains. He rips off a gain of five. And we have played three quarters of football. Miami on the move, trailing Northern Illinois, 17-13. Stick around, great fourth quarter's coming up.
Husky fans, Batty's Pub and Grill in DeKalb is your official pre- and post-game NIU football headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our big screens or having some of our famous grilled food out in our beer garden, Batty's is the place to be. Reserve your date for your holiday party at Fatty's. And if you're looking for catering for your next event, Fatty's also offers full service on and off-site catering. For more information, go to fattyspub.com or call 815-758-7737. Got a full-size life? You need a full-size vehicle. Step up to the best. It's GMC Truck Month. Get professional-grade engineering, power, cargo space, and fuel efficiency. Like GMC Yukon, with better available highway fuel economy than Toyota Sequoia. It's time to live your life. It's GMC Truck Month. Now get 0% APR financing for 72 months on the 2008 GMC Yukon. See your local fuel economy at GMC dealer. Maybe your own price, huh? Yeah, they want 200 for a four-star on the Vegas Strip. I'm going 190. Oh, you wuss. What? Go lower. 160? Namby pamby. 99. Now you're negotiating. At Priceline, find half-price hotels every day. Save up to half off Expedia's best price and Hotels.com's best price on over 16,000 hotels. Find half-price hotels every day at Priceline. All right, one quarter of football left. Northern Illinois has their fans in a happy mood right now. They have a 17-13 lead. Roundabout looking, throwing incomplete. Tough pass to go across your body rolling. Well, what way. he has to do with that, he has to stay on the run. He had time. He had time. Stay on the run, square your shoulders, and if it's definitely not there, take off with the football. Look at those numbers. 127 first half total yards. They nearly equaled it. Came close in the third quarter alone. Adjustments, coaching. Miami had six first downs at the half. They had six more in the third quarter. Second and 10, Radovan with Thomas Merriweather, the single back, he's throwing. Looks, throws, finds his man. Dustin Woods makes the catch. To the sidelines we go, Jim Blaney. Thank you very much, Dave DeFranco, who went out a few plays ago for Miami with the injury. They were checking just under his rib cage. And they just kind of poked around in there for a while. And then DeFranco stood up, raised his arms over his head, said, I'm good to go. And now he's back in the game. Back to you. Oh, 17-13, 14-20 to go on a third and five. The Husky faithful rises one, looking for a stop. Radabaugh throwing, looking, rolling. Fires incomplete. Northern Illinois turns him away. Melvin Rice came up and made the play. Real nice play by Melvin Rice. There's Rodabaugh rolling and he fires and Melvin Rice gets up and makes a play. Big time play out of the defensive secondary. So Miami will punt the football away with 14.05 to go in the fourth. Miko Brown is the deep man, and I'm welcomed by the athletic director, Jeff Comfort. Well, you gotta like what you're seeing so far. Heck of a football it's game. It's been a heck of a game. And that punt is going to be downed inside the five yard line. We'll see where they spot it. Somewhere around the three or the four. So Northern Illinois is gonna have a long way to go, but uh, protecting a four point lead. Forty-two yards, the distance on the punt. Get a look at head coach Jerry Kill. Got to be pleased with what you're seeing after a real tough loss at Tennessee. The guys have really come out and played a, a good football game. They they really have. You know, we all, we have played hard all year in every one of our games. We've been in every game, and you know this is this is all too familiar so far, Cappy. Miko Brown, the single back set. Can't. Hand off to Miko Brown. He stumbles and will be dragged out short of the five-yard line. 
kind of a confidence builder, even though it's a loss when you go into Nayland Stadium down in Tennessee and there's 90,000 people, you should have won the football game. Well, we were one big play away from winning. I told the coach afterwards, we didn't win the game, we, but we won a lot of respect. And, and that was true. He had a great conversation with Tennessee's coach after that, after that game on Monday and complimented us heavily on the way we played and especially on special teams and how we got to them when no one else has been able to do that. Second and nine. Harness hands it to Miko Brown, picks his way, makes a man miss. It'll bring up a manageable third and two. And Grady looked so good in the first half at quarterback and then twists the ankle and Harness has stepped up. He really has. You know, we were so happy to get him back this week. Uh, this is one of the only games we've only had to use two quarterbacks uh, all year long. So it's great to have him back. Great to have depth at the position. Yes, it is. Big play for Northern Illinois, third and two at the 1240 mark. They give it to Miko Brown. Miko Brown picks his way. First down, Huskies. Move the chains. Big, big play there. Lot, as you take a look at the replay, Miko Brown has been the workhorse today. Not the only guy carrying the mail, but makes a man miss and then drags a tackler, picks up a couple extra yards. Lots of good things going on for Husky Athletics. What, give us some of your thoughts. Well, you know, every team that we have has benefited in the last couple of years with facility improvements here, and, and we're so happy about that. Obviously, the Jordan Center is a huge improvement, but you know, just recently we opened our track soccer complex, and that's been great for those teams. And we've opened the hit center, so our golf and softball and baseball programs have had some some uh, great opportunities to get some workouts in when the weather isn't uh, the best. And and just recently we did some renovation on our on our uh, gymnastics area and our wrestling program has a whole new mat room. So we've made some huge strides that I've been able to walk into and really say thank you to everybody. So. Makes it great for the coaches. It, it does. Miko Brown gains nothing there, turned away on a second and 10 now at the 18 yard line. Harnish, play action looking, blitz coming, throws. And he was hit as he was releasing it. Real tough play, Bob, to try and step up in the face of a guy about to light you up. How have you felt about the initial uh, you know, people that you've met in the Mid-American Conference? I know you've had a great reception here at Northern Illinois, but all through the conference, what have, what have been your impressions about MAC football and the MAC Conference? Well, obviously it's great football. What we saw today with what Toledo did and and other examples throughout the league this entire season and, and the show we put on down in Neyland Stadium last week. I'm very impressed and I know a lot of these ADs, Bob. I, I've worked with them. I've known them at other places. The AD at Miami, Brad Bates and I, we worked together at Vanderbilt. Uh, the coach here at Miami was a quarterback at NC State when I was there, Shane Montgomery. So um, I know what kind of people they are. I know what kind of players they were. And uh, to see them in these positions, I know they're going to put good teams on the field. Watch this play. Real nice job, Harnish. Off a play action, fakes to Miko Brown and finds a wide open Marcus Perez, Bobby. Oh, uh, you know, two things right there. The quarterback setting his setting his shoulders square, looking for the receiver, seeing the entire field, and then the receiver setting it. I can't emphasize enough. Choke your motor down that soft spot in the zone. Make yourself a big target. First and ten for the Huskies. Now at the 41. Miko Brown makes a man miss. Miko Brown rips off nine yards. He is now at 123 yards. That is a career high for Miko Brown. This young man out of Moss Point, Mississippi. He is an outstanding running back. But David, it all comes down to what goes on up front. And I'm sure Miko Brown would be the first person to tell you that. They get a good push. They're a well-coached offensive line. I even saw Harnish come out and make a block on that play. Yeah, he did. <laughs> we have a new play. It's called the quarterback isolation. That's it. <laughs> all, the big, all the big guys in the film session on Monday, they'll like that. They Chad, will. Chad Spann now the single back set. Shotgun approach. Harnish is going to keep it himself. Harnish up the gut. 
move the chains. That's another Northern Illinois first down. And you know, Bob, we talked about how exhausted the defense had to be after that lengthy Miami drive. I'll tell you what, this is exactly what the doctor ordered. Well, there, we, look at this. Fellas enjoying the game, got a great seat. Keep that offense on the field, keep that ball moving, move the chains. This has been the most impressive drive that I've seen out of Northern Illinois thus far this year. Great play calling, great execution, and great technique by the offensive lineman. I can't say enough about technique. And what a technique, scheme is how you do it. Technique is what you do within that scheme. We're here with Northern Illinois Athletic Director Jeff Comfer. Harnish, gonna throw, finds Marcus Perez, makes a cut. Picks up three more yards and another Northern Illinois first down. When you've got a guy, Jeff, like Larry English, he's not only going to get attention in this area, he's going to get national attention. Is that incumbent then on the athletic department to do all they can to get him those national accolades? That's true. I mean, you got to make sure that he's nominated. You've got to campaign for him, if you will, and you got to be sure that when there's opportunity out there, you, you make sure the media understands it and knows how good a player he is. And uh, we've done a great job with that. Donna Turner and her, and her staff has done a marvelous job for Larry. Larry English, one of the top defensive linemen in America, two and a half sacks last week against Tennessee. Harnish, gonna keep it himself. Harnish will make a man miss. Stumbles up inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. And the clock will tick at 8.45. This is the second straight Northern Illinois possession where they've had a really good drive down the field. Well, you talk about rhythm. You talk about getting into a rhythm. You talk about getting a hat on a hat. You talk about executing. And it, it, you just see they just have that little, just that little more zip step. Jeff, if I may, going over the personal backgrounds of many of these young guys in the press guide, you have National Honor Society guys. You have 14 captains from both sides of the field. You have a, a defensive lineman with 3-4, 3-5, 4.0 GPAs. This team possesses not only great football ability, but great character. And, and, they're, and they're smart, as you said. And our coaches said at the beginning of the year, they were able to install more of the offense and more of the defense in a shorter amount of time than any other team they've ever worked with. And that says a lot about how focused they are and ready to compete they are. Well, in any situation, whether it's a business, whether it's an athletic department, whether it's a football team, when there is new leadership, there is that learning period. There is that time when you start to interface, start to trust each other, start to say, hey, look, you know, this is Jerry Kill's football team. This is his fingerprint gets more obvious on this football team with almost every single snap, every quarter, every game. That is the truth, and he gives a lot of that credit to Larry English in stepping up and being a leader, a vocal leader on this team, and the acceptance factor was huge for Harness him. throws, and it's incomplete. He was looking incomplete for Willie pass. Clark. Willie Clark, the intended receiver. It bounces in on a fourth and four now. We have fourth and four at the 26-yard line. It'll you know, be we, a field goal try to get it to a seven-point lead. Jeff, you've heard this term before about coaches, but I, uh, in, in my heart of hearts, Jerry Kill is a football coach's football coach. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad to hear you say that, Bobby, because I, I believe that, and I know the respect he's received around the country, and two-time national coach of the year, that says it all. Out of the hole to get better, and flags fly. I believe we had a false start, which is going to make this that much more difficult. Move it back five yards. Those are the kind of penalties you can't have Snap at that Number 55, Number 55. Offense. offense, penalized five, five yards. yards. The fourth down. Jeff, I, I say kick the football. I, I really think he has enough leg. I, I, I'd, I'd kick the football. I'd go for the field goal. They are going to listen to you. Salerno will try it from 48 yards. The breeze has calmed down, so it's not into much of a wind. Snap, set, kick is up. It's going to be no good. He is wide. He missed the field goal, had the distance. We'll take a timeout. Got a doozy going. Thank you, Jeff Comfort. We'll be back here in DeKalb. Here's something to celebrate, a new Applebee's neighborhood value. 
Endless favorites starting at $9.99. Choose from sweet and meaty riblets, panko crusted shrimp, or golden delicious chicken tenders. Your choice, all you can eat, starting at $9.99. Be ashamed not to have a cold beer with that. It's an all-you-can-eat dinner, but you gotta hurry. Endless riblets, shrimp, or chicken tenders, starting at $9.99. Only at Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. Skinny payments, fat service. 09 RX 350 all-wheel drive, only $4.29 a month. Downright spooky. Bob Roarman's Arlington, Lexus, and Palatine, just one block west of Route 53 on Dundee Road. Looking for a little off the top? We're cutting. 0.9 APR for 60 months on a certified pre-owned Lexus. Ooh, sharp. Bob Roarman's Arlington, Lexus, and Palatine, just one block west of Route 53 on Dundee Road. 17-13, so a missed field goal leaves Miami a chance. A touchdown would give them the lead. 7-17 to go. The broadcast rights for this event have been granted to Comcast Sportsnet by Northern Illinois University. Any reproduction, rebroadcast, without the express written consent of Comcast Sportsnet and NIU is strictly prohibited. Merriweather will be the single back. They'll hand it to him, and he'll be dragged down short of the 35. Gain of nearly four, though, so a good first down play. 99, Craig Rush was there to make the tackle. Now, we talked about the Northern Illinois front time and again. This is a very, very well-coached, athletic, strong defensive front. But the fact of the matter is they're just a little bit worn down today. I mean, they they come up big. They've been on this the field a lot. a lot. They have to reach down. They have to reach down right now. Six minutes, 46 seconds left in the game. Just keep on coming as a defensive lineman. That's what you're being coached to do. Radabaugh. Radabaugh knocked down. Short of a first down, but it will be third and very short. The difference being from a defensive lineman, so what about the offensive line? The offensive line, they have to, they have to reach down too. They're big guys, but they do not run the distances that defensive linemen run. It's pass rushing for a big guy is just so fatigued. I mean, and, and that's why you look at great teams, they have great depth in the defensive line, especially in the, in the scheme of today's college football, where it's basically throw, throw, throw. Big, big play here for both sides. As we wane down in the fourth quarter, the throw, and it's incomplete. Rodemont's pass, incomplete. Armand, Armand Robinson just could not hang on. Fourth down and two. What do you do if you're Miami? You take a timeout, first of all. I would have run that a slant. I would have run a quicker slant rather than a, you know, taking the ball downfield that way. All right. We've got a timeout on the field. We'll find out what Miami will do when we come back on Comcast Sportsnet. It's a 40th anniversary celebration at Casey's General Stores. All month, sign up to win free gas for an entire year. You could be a big winner just like Elizabeth Reed from Geneseo, Illinois. Casey's, it's all good. Tuesday, the Bulls preseason continues on Comcast Sportsnet as the number one overall draft pick, Derrick Rhodes and the Bulls take on the Minnesota Timberwolves at the United Center. Bulls, Timberwolves in HD, Tuesday at 7.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans, best friends. You never know who's going to drop by Chicago Tribune Live. Jonathan Taves. It was incredible to spend the whole year in Chicago, um, especially, you know, watching the progress that our team made. Tommy Harris. I never thought about injury until I got hurt. Right. And I, I, you know, you really respect it afterwards. Tom Arnold. If you hate a Cup fan, you're a bad person <laughs> because it's been 100 years. Jerry Reinstor. He's so good for our club and for our fans. I, I, I just, they just put up with the goofy things. Chicago Tribune Live, presented by Steak and Shake, weeknights at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Join the post-game party on Comcast Sportsnet as I break down every Bears game with former Bears Dan Jiggins, Jerry Azuma, and Jim Miller. We'll bring you the Bears press conferences after every Every game and William Jackson is live outside the Bears locker room with player reaction. Plus, Jerry Azuma gives out his coveted Jerry GQ Award to the best dressed bear. Trust me, you don't want to miss US Cellular Bears post game live after every game only on Comcast Sportsnet. Thanks, best friend. 
All right, huge fourth down. Miami says we're going for it. Fourth and two. Ronabaugh with Bratton as his signal back. Timeout, Northern Illinois. Now, timeout. Bring your team Northern over Illinois. to the side if you're not Their going first to punt. Time out. I mean, if you are going to punt, probably not. Okay, good point. Number two, do you bring your team over to the side and discuss a hard count to draw Northern off and get the first down that way? Now, if you do have the hard count and you don't draw them offside, now do you continue to execute the play or do you call a timeout and punt the football? You can't burn your second timeout. I know. At the 552 mark. Yeah. You know, if you want to go with the hard count right away at the line of scrimmage, yeah. okay, but you can't use two timeouts to try and do that. No way. I don't think Shane Montgomery would do that. I, I, I don't, you know, whether they get the first down or not, I, I think in, in my, I, I'd punt the football. I mean, you got five minutes and 52 seconds left. You've got the wind at your back. Let's check in with Jim Blaney. Let's check in with Jim Blaney. All right, David, this has been a very hard-hitting game. The latest to go out, left corner, Bradley Pruitt, left ankle injury, out for the game. Back to you. All right, Bradley Pruitt, number 24, who's played a whale of a football game. Here we go. They are going for it. Throwing, looking, knocked down. And a flag flies from 40 yards away. That flag was 35, 40 yards away. Melvin Rice in coverage. Let's see what the call is. Got to be an interference call. Pass interference. Defense. Number two. First down. Let's get a look at this again because the flag comes from way downfield. I think it's. A, I, I think it was a good call. It was my first thought as soon as as soon as the uh, defender lined up. There's the throw. Boy, very tough to tell. Does he have a hand on his back? Is the question. He does not. Yes, uh, he, yes, does. he does. He's got him by his jersey. That's a good call. Hand off Merriweather. Rumbles to the 45. Give that official from 35 yards away a lot of credit because there were other officials right on top of the play that didn't see it. Well, I, I, I really think it's a very well officiated game. I mean, this is not that hard a call. David, he's stretching the guy's shirt. He's got him by the jersey. Excellent call. Ronabaugh hands to Merriweather. And he cracks the 40-yard line to the 39-yard line. On a gain of six, second and four, we tick towards five minutes. I mean, DeFranco and, and uh, Soderwade, Brooks, Sutter, Gull these guys are really, I mean, they have really come into a, a bit of a new life here as this game's progressed. But you know, offensive lineman, I don't want to pass block. Let me run block. Let me, boom, let me put a hand on the head. Let me take him out. Merriweather drilled. You know, David, David Bryant and Craig Rush in on the stop. You see Tom Crabtree, the fullback in motion, what we call in an up situation. There he is right there. He's going on the linebacker. Nice job. Left one, still one man unaccounted. Now, why do you see this? Very few teams recruit true fullbacks anymore. And that goes back to that NFL model. Football is copycat. There are fullbacks around, but they're dinosaurs. You get a tight end, two, three tight ends, and you use them in that situation to be lead block. Third and three, Bratton replaces Merriweather. Ronabaugh looks, throws, and it's nearly picked off by David Bryan. It was tipped off the hands of Dustin Woods. Fourth and three. Absolutely, absolutely four down territory. Very obvious, okay? Do you, in that situation, go for the first down, as they did here, or do you go for a chunk and then another chunk? It's difficult to say. 
again, I, and again, I'm not here to evaluate wide receivers, but I've seen some footballs today that should have been caught, and that was one right there. You have to catch a football with your eyes, not your hands. All right. Red Hawks. Concentration. Need a first down. The Huskies need a stop. Rodabaugh looking. Throws. He finds his man. Move the sticks. First down, Dustin Woods. First down, Miami. Great pitch. Great catch. Dustin Woods, great route. 5'11", 192, junior. Hey, here, look. Rodabaugh knows that this is a huge play. He hangs in there. He's under duress. He knows exactly what, what has to happen. And, and, and watch how he sees the spot. Look at, look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. Okay. And there's that spot, just be, an equidistant spot between two defenders. Perfectly executed pass. Rodabaugh pressure. Dumps it off. Has his man Bratton. Bratton makes a man miss. Bratton moves the sticks, but a flag flies. Right at the end of the play, is it going to be a face mask? We will see. Josh Satterwick, the big, the big, big center. 6'4", 315, blocking in space. He literally engulfed. Holding on Miami. Whoa. And that flag came right at the end of the play. Let's get it. Illegal block in the back. Number 83, offense, penalized 10 yards from the spot of the foul. The first down. It'll be Jake O'Connell. Miami has 12 penalties for 83 yards, Bob Cannell. Totally unacceptable. I mean, execute a play that way. That is the, one of the most difficult plays. I, I, even a screen pass, I don't even call that the ability to execute the play. It's more of a how the play is choreographed. Everybody has to be in the right place at the right time. Rodabaugh finds his man. And a huge hit. I think it was Larry English that just laid the lumber to Clayton Mullins. Sorry, Jamal Rogers. He did just that little push in the back. You could not operate on the backside when you're blocking. You have to have your hands within the framework of the body, the front numbers. As Coach Holtz, you said a long time with our wide receivers, block the guys where the little numbers are, not where the big numbers are. Second and seven, Rodabaugh looking, throwing, has got his man. Staggers down to the 12 at the 210 mark. Eugene Harris, the third, made the catch. He's the man that returned the punt for a touchdown. There's the throw. Gain of 17 on the play and a huge first down for Miami. Eugene Harris, a great route. David, I talked to you about separation. You sell the deep route. You get the corner moving. You plant and you come back for the football. That's why those corners, big time corners, how they make their money, they have the ability to mirror the wide receiver and also make that plant and come back and disrupt the ball. And I'll tell you, Rodabaugh's shown some great, great arm strength here, David. Great arm strength. You know, early on in the game, we're trying to decide, will, 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 will he stay the whole game? And he's done a nice job. All right, got a timeout. We've got a doozy going. 17-13 Huskies, Red Hawks, driving. Fresh at Jewel Osco, it's what we're all about. It started with an idea to offer the finest meat, seafood, produce, and baked goods around. And even though we've been serving Chicago for over 100 years, we never stop looking for new ways to improve. So whatever you're in the market for, you can always find it here, fresh to your family, from Jewel Osco. Advance your career with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. I was able to balance my MBA with my professional life as well as my personal life. And best of all, NIU's MBA program is AACSB accredited and affordable. I was impressed with the knowledge and experience of the professors, and the program provided me with a well-rounded business education. The affordability and convenient locations made my decision easy, and it made my MBA 
a reality. Designed for the working professional, the MBA program at Northern Illinois University. Jumpstart your career today. 17-13, 1.51 to go. Miami has the ball at the Northern Illinois 12. Thomas Merriweather back as the single back set. Ronabaugh throws to the end zone. No, incomplete. Absolutely a broken play. The reason it was a broken play is because Crabtree could not get out. He was initially part of the block and he could not get out. He was to run diagonally down the middle of the field. He could not find the escape route to get into the secondary. See, David, they lined him up like a fullback, as I said before, with the play-action fake. That gives a lot of draw to those linebackers. But then what Crabtree has to do, or any tight end in that situation, find that little crease and get out there. Andre Bratton is now the single back. Rodabaugh pumps, throws, finds Bratton, makes a man miss, and instead is wrapped up. Alex Kuba hung in there and made a heck of a tackle. Great open field tackle. This ta this whole this tackle right here, it's technique, but it's also desire. It's also desire. F just find that one spot. Hang on, hang on. That was, Wonderful open field tackle. I thought he tackle. was going to break free, and Kuba really made a good play. Well, that's where the weight room pays off. That's where the weight room pays off, David. That's why people, skill position guys, their time in the weight room is equally important to that of offensive linemen and defensive linemen and linebackers. And these skill position guys in the secondary, they're getting stronger, they're getting faster. That play right there will show a lot of, co of pro scouts what this young guy's all about. Casey's Post Game Show and the Casey's Co Coaches Comments Post Game Show is brought to you by Casey's General Store, the official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Casey's, a convenience store and a whole lot more, and that's coming up in just a couple of moments. 1.27 to go, ball game on the line. And now they've reset the clock to 1.32. 1.32 to go. Ball sits at the 13 yard line, excuse me, the 15 yard line on a third and 13. The crowd rises as one again. Did you see Radabon that close up, that little wink? <laughs> Something's going on. Something's going on. <laughs> Something's going on. He has shown a great deal of confidence. He showed a lot of poise. Early in the game, as I mentioned before, there was question at, at, at the kickoff. Would he stay the entire game? Would he remain through the game? Or would we see the reliever? He's earned every right to be in this football game. He's done a nice job. He, and I, I am really impressed with his arm strength, David. He's thrown the ball very, very well. You know, the old saying, he's got a lot of different throws. He's got, you know, the, the fade route. He can throw the ball on the line when he needs to do it. And that's what you have to have in college football with these types of offenses. You have to have the ability to make all of those throws. Time on the clock is correct. They timed out the last play at 132. So they did put five seconds back on. It was at 127. And that's where it sits. Rodabaugh calls out signals. Rodabaugh looking, throwing, and it's knocked down or dropped in the back of the end zone. I couldn't quite tell. Chris Givens, did someone get a hand on it? Melvin Rice was there in coverage. Larry English was mugged on that play. Fourth I and 13. Miami takes their final timeout. Nearly knocked down. How do you stop an All-American? You hold it. Well, one of the things that uh, you know that Norman can do with that pass rush is bring English to the outside, have him break down and come underneath, and have the other guy come to the outside. Our Adidas player of the game, Adidas, the official outfitter of Husky Athletics, is Miko Brown, a career high in rushing today, 
for Miko Brown, and he was the star offensively from the first play of the game right there. Miko Brown had a huge day, ran for over 120. The key blocks, picking up blitzes. A real solid performance out of Miko Brown. Congratulations to him. He is our Adidas player of the game, the 5'7 freshman out of Moss Point, Mississippi. Well, he's, he's beginning to take his place in this lineage of fine tailbacks that have played at Husky Stadium for the Northern Illinois Huskies through the past, you know, past probably decade and a half. And that pass batted down. Big time play, Josh Allen. Just saved the touchdown with one whale of a defensive play. Talk about a defense coming up big. This Husky defense came up big. They had their back to the wall. They knew exactly what they had to do, and they executed. Here's English. Here's English. Watch the throw, and there, there's a man there. I Real mean, nice play, Josh Allen look, saving the game. Look at the way they converged on that football. Great job by that secondary. Great team defense. Great pass rush. David, this setting today, this football game, the type of football we've seen, I hate to use this cliche, but it just doesn't get any better. That's that that is a that's a quarterback and a coach's favorite play right there. The coach's comments and the Casey's post-game show coming up in just a moment. Huskies in victory formation. They will take a knee and win a very hard fought 17. 13 football game. You know the good news? You and I get to do this again next week. And the week yeah, after. And the week after. Love it. Next week, the homecoming game as the Toledo Rockets come to town. And then Bowling Green will be here. That is going to do it. The Rockets will be soaring after their game today in Ann Arbor. That is the final play. Northern Illinois has hung on, and they get their second win of the year at home. They have beaten the Miami Redhawks in a whale of a football game. 17-13 the final. Coach Jerry Kill. You, know, you come into a new situation, there are so many variables, so many things you need to learn about you guys. Great, great job. Time out coming up. We'll be back with the Casey's Post Game Show and the Casey's Coach's Comment. Stick around a Comcast Sports Fan. Everyone has a special talent or aptitude. At NIU, world-class faculty work closely with each and every student to help them identify and develop their own unique skills. NIU students participate in groundbreaking research, get hands-on work experience, explore their ambitions, and find their niche. It's the hallmark of an educational experience that is second to none. Discover your genius at NIU. This broadcast of Northern Illinois Husky football is brought to you by Fatty's Pub and Grill, the official tailgate home of NIU Athletics. Village Commons Bookstore for all your Husky clothing and souvenirs. Visit bcbs.com. Applebee's. Try Applebee's car side to go. You call it in, we bring it out. Casey's General Stores, the official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Casey's a convenience store and a whole lot more. Blaine's Farm and Fleet. I found it at Farm and Fleet. Jewel, we take one-stop shopping to the next level. TCF Bank opens seven days. The University Plaza, it's where to live. The NIU MBA programs take the NIU MBA challenge. Kishwaukee Hospital, health, heart, home. And Resource Bank, where banking is a pleasure. 17-13, the final on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon in DeKalb, Illinois. 
It's the Casey's General Store post-game show and Casey's coach's comments down to Jim Blaney. All right, David, thank you very much. Here with victorious Northern Illinois football coach Jerry Kill. And Jerry, before we talk about the game, just standing under this goalpost and watching the looks on your players' faces as they came off the field, I guess this is why you guys do this, is when you can come off the field with a victory like that, that's the whole reason you go through everything you go through every week. Well, I think these kids have gone through the other opposite a year ago, and they've had some close ones, and, and we got a close one, and, and we found a way to win. I mean, that's the bottom line. Defense stepped up when they needed to. Offense scored when they needed to. And, uh, you know, uh, the game of football is a lot like life. It's a battle every day. That's what a good friend of mine named Carl Mock told me. 22 points allowed by your defense in the last four games. It's an amazing way these guys are playing, but how important is it for a team to be able to have a foundation like that to be able to rely on every Saturday? Well, it's tremendous, and being that we have so many players hurt right now, it's really unbelievable what we've gone through at quarterback. Uh, did not plan on playing Chandler Harnish and played him, and uh, it's just unbelievable. The kids are giving great effort, and uh, uh, we needed this one, no question. Jerry, congratulations. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, head coach Jerry yeah. killed by three starters today for Northern with injuries, so a big victory for the Huskies today. David, back to you. All right, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Coach Kill. Thanks, Bob Kamel. Don't forget, the next NIU game on Comcast Sports Network Saturday, October 18th, live at 3. Huskies battle the Toledo Rockets. For Bob Kamel and Jim Blaney, our spotter, Todd Armour, I'm David Kaplan saying so long from Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois. Huskies win at 17, 13 over Miami. Receiving an exclusive presentation of Comcast Sports. Chicagoans love their pizza. That's why you come to Giordano's, some for 30 years now. We use only the finest ingredients to make Giordano's famous stuffed pizza, our equally famous thin crust pizza, plus salads, pastas, sandwiches, and more. Come on into Giordano's and celebrate 30 great years with us. Giordano's, famous stuffed pizza.